Step into the realm of mystery with Paranormal M. Subscribe and enable notifications. That way you will stay connected with our latest mind-boggling tales that'll keep you on the edge of your seat. My mom swears she could fly. My mom told me this story many years ago. She's getting older and a little loopy, but this was way before any of that. It would be about how she swears her and a few other girls, including my aunt, learned to fly in the basement of her old house. She told me this very sheepishly, probably expecting me to ridicule her. It was the way she approached it and told me, and her apprehension to even mention it that seemed to make it all the more true. She said that her and her friends could fly. I'd used the word levitate for small amounts of time in her house in the basement. She said they never told or showed anyone because they were worried that, that would make it stop working. She'd lived there for a few months after before moving into a new house, and that it never worked anywhere else beside there. She described the basement in detail and how she could clearly remember floating up to see dust on the top of the cabinets and things that were too tall to have seen as a little kid. She said of her friend group, some were better at it than others, but that they could all eventually make it to work to some degree. As she was telling me this, I had like this extreme deja vu feeling like I was remembering edges of a forgotten dream. I didn't necessarily feel like I had those memories or could do it myself, but just a really weird feeling that I knew all along my mom could levitate when she was a kid. I never really brought it up again, and of course I didn't make fun of her for it. I believe all kinds of crazy shit is possible, and I was thankful that she felt like sharing that with me. My first ever unexplained experience. When I was around maybe 11 or 12 years old, living in the UK, I went through a period of four months where at night, I could never sleep all the way through at home. No matter how I tried, or what time I went to bed, I would always wake up around 2 to 3 a.m., if I slept at my grandmother's house, no problems at all. Every night that I woke up, it would be silent in the house, except for a light tapping sound coming from the corner of my bedroom. That's where my wardrobe used to be. Every night I would hear this tapping noise, and it would keep me from being able to fall back asleep. In part because I was absolutely pooping my pants. The tapping sound was never continuous. It would tap for different lengths of time and then stop, before continuing again. This counted out my mother's, it must be the next door neighbor's clock, when I told her all about it. Creaking wardrobe doors, or just my imagination, were two other explanations that my mother gave me. Also, I'd use that wardrobe daily, when getting changed into fresh clothes, and nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I remember one night I decided enough was enough. I had spent about an hour lying in bed listening to the tapping and struggling to sleep. I jumped out of bed and went over to my wardrobe, grasped both of the handles and flung the doors open. There was a pause for about one minute while I had the handles in my hands. Once again pooping myself. As the doors flung open, a t-shirt that I'd had on one of my hangers hit me in the face. I had a feeling like something had punched me in the stomach. I remember lying on the floor in my room. Not sure for how long, but it was like time jumped forward three hours my parents were getting up for work. I said nothing, 
went about my day as if nothing had happened. That was the last night that I ever woke up in the early hours of the morning, and the last time I ever heard that tapping sound. As I've grown older, I've spoken to my mother about it all, and she has told me many stories about her old house, and I have returned the favor with some of my other experiences. She said that because I was young and got scared easily, she always tried to find a rational excuse for whatever spooky scenario I ever told her I was in. I keep waking up at 3.33 a.m. I, a 21-year-old female, keep waking up at 3.33 a.m. I'm also seeing this time constantly when I look at the clock before I get off of work, 3.30 p.m. in this case, or even when I look at my phone when I'm on the phone and call with someone. This happened when I was telling my dad the story earlier this morning. I looked at my phone, and we had been on the phone for 33... 33 colon 33... I don't know if that's 33 hours and 33... Okay, it must be 33 minutes and 33 seconds. Sorry. Starting to get a bit freaked out. Now, back to what my title is about. Five times within the last few months, I've woken up at 3.33 a.m. And it would be to the same noise in my house. Someone yelling. I'm always waking up mid-reply as if I'm trying to yell something back but can never remember what I'm saying in the moments following. For context, I live with three other people, my mom, sister, and stepdad. I am the first one to get up in the morning at 5 a.m., while they all get up around 6 or 7. So it would make no sense for it to be any of them. They are already all asleep. And like I said, this is my fifth occurrence in the last few months. I think this started in November. The first time I thought it was coincidence but I'm starting to believe that it isn't anymore. As soon as I woke up this morning to this occurrence, my cat was on my chest within seconds and tried to nuzzle underneath my blanket, then laid completely still. I sensed I was being watched, and I think he did too. For more context on the house itself, my room is on the second floor, in a corner. I'm next to the upstairs bathroom, which the door is normally open, allowing the mirror to create a portal or a vortex with the mirror in my mom's room, right across the hall. I'm aware of this, and I try to close the bathroom door when I can, especially at night. But when I wake up, it's always open. 1-19-2023 I talked to my grandpa last night via phone call since he lives states away. The first thing he asked me was, Are you wearing your crystal I gave you? Which, to his surprise, my answer was no. Honestly, I was never a big believer in crystals to begin with, but my mind might be changing on that opinion slightly. He said that he would tune in and see what he could find and ask those he communicates with spiritually. He personally found nothing to be too concerned about. He is, though, in communication with my great-grandpa who passed away before I was born, and he said that he would check in on me last night. I was a little skeptical, I'm not going to lie. That was until I was talking to my dad after the phone call. We were sitting in the living room, just him and I, while my sister and stepmom were in another room. This is my dad's house, not the house I'm currently living in. And from behind my dad, I swore I saw movement in the sunroom. My dad is also very in tune with things that happen around him. And he smiled and said, Someone's in the sunroom, isn't there? You see them? It wasn't so much see, more like feel. So my dad and I got up to go into the sunroom. And upon approaching the doorway, a cold chill blew past us. Both my dad's arm hair and mine stood straight up. Wish I was lying. 
I hated that feeling. My dad walked in and asked me to describe what I was feeling. I sensed a male that I had never met. He was tall, tall enough to have possibly hit his head on the door to the sunroom. My dad laughed and said it was probably Great Grandpa D. Just like my grandpa, he's, well, come to check on me. And he was six foot two. I didn't feel unwelcomed in the space, but I didn't step foot inside of it because whatever, whoever was in there was unfamiliar. Yet warm in a way that I can't describe. I just turned my back to the room and walked away. I felt eyes on me. But I put on my shoes and said bye to my dad. This whole encounter had me very freaked out and I feel like I've opened a part of my brain that I'm not quite sure I want opened. But I feel like it's too late. Crawling Ghost Slash Spirit I tried looking up oh so many things about crawling apparitions and figures, but all that comes up is that infernal ghost game. So I need some input. I'm at my boyfriend's house. It's built in the 70s, so not too far gone. And I'm hanging out with him in bed. Out his bedroom door and in the all excuse me, and in the hallway, I see a naked human figure crawling on all fours. He was crawling towards his bathroom, and I just stare. I wasn't scared, but bewildered having never seen something like that before. But I'm sure that's what it was. Not on hands and knees, but flat on its feet. I only caught a glimpse of the backside. Its rear was slightly below the door handle. When he stands up to investigate, a shuffle comes from the hall. But nothing's there. He taunts it, then comes to lay with me again. Now I was scared. A friend of ours told me that she had seen spirits that follow him. I'm a little sensitive to spirits myself, but I'm a feeler, if that makes sense. At his house, I don't sleep soundly. Sleep talking often when at my house. We both rest easy, which is another off-putting note. I can't find much about the crawling dude, but I fear it's demonic in nature, and that thought terrifies me since we're a long way from moving out together. And I don't want him living with that, you know? Should I cleanse this house? I've cleansed and put protections up when my mom had an encounter, and she's been fine since. Is that the play, or is this something stronger? Big Parish. I think they mean very much appreciated. Can a spirit enter a house during an estate sale? Let's find out. We just finished a four-day estate sale in my living hoarder mother's house. My sister and I ran it. Since the sale, we have had three stair-related injuries in the house. My mother swears that it felt like the railing disappeared and reappeared. My husband and I told my sister that we were thinking of buying the house and we were all set on that idea. Then, after the sale, I began to get sick to my stomach every time I thought about purchasing the house. I admitted my misgivings to my sister, and she lit up, told me that my mom had told her about a premonition or something terrible would happen if we did buy that house. She's very religious. She thinks that something was attached to a person at the estate sale, or stayed in the home. Is this something that could happen? Now, of course, moving-related injuries occur more frequently when moving. Indeed. Spirit or Intruder 
Myself and three friends have recently moved into a new house. It's in a pretty deserted area outside of the town. My room is particularly big with two big windows. The last few weeks I've had the feeling of constantly being watched. I've never had much fear of spirits or paranormal activity, but this felt different. My bedroom is upstairs, yet I always hear knocking on my windows. I've been cautious of this recently, and making sure that I'm keeping them locked. Yesterday when I got home from work, I noticed one of my windows was unlocked and slightly open again. This is not the first time. I didn't think too much about it. I locked it, went downstairs to watch a movie with my housemates. We all called at night, went to bed around 10 p.m. Not long after getting into bed, I heard a knock on my bedroom door. I assumed it was one of my housemates, but for some reason had a bad feeling. So I ignored it, and instead asked the girls if any of them had knocked on my door in that group chat. They hadn't. When we got up this morning, my friend told us that she woke up in the night terrified that something was in her room, or someone. Her back was to the door of her room, but she heard noises and felt a presence which didn't seem to leave. So eventually, she turned to look and noticed her bedroom door was open, and her bag, which had been hanging on her wardrobe door, was lying in the frame of the open door. She was too scared to investigate, so stayed in bed. At 7 a.m., we all woke up to find her upstairs balcony door was laying open, in the upstairs hallway. Our downstairs window was wide open as if pushed by somebody. I then investigated my room and noticed my handbag and belt had been moved from a hook behind my bed, laid onto a rug in front of my bed. She then messaged in the group chat to ask if anybody was awake, but we were all asleep. Our friend whose bedroom is downstairs said that she had an awful night's sleep. She felt she was suffering from sleep paralysis and could see a dark figure pacing around the laundry room, which can be seen from her bedroom window. The large armchair upstairs in the hallway was also moved from the center of the hall to against the wall. We are four girls living in Thailand. At first we assumed it was an intruder, but with further investigation we noticed nothing had been taken. There was money around the house. TV, laptops, and our keys were even left inside the engines of our motorcycles outside. Ask Reddit My family and I have had many experiences that seemed very paranormal. Guests that stayed over experienced some of it as well. When I was in fifth grade, my family moved to a military base in Germany. We moved into a house that seemed pretty normal, but not long after we moved in, there were many strange things that would happen to make us all believe that the paranormal is a real thing. One instance was one day after school I walked home. I was alone, like any other stay. As I got to the front door and opened it, all the doors that were visible from the front door, which were four, were slamming open and closed repeatedly. Stood there for about five seconds scared shitless before I noped the hell out of there and went outside for my brother to come home. Just to get a better visual, once you open the front door there's a hallway, and you can see the doors of the bathroom, a bedroom in the basement, and a closet. I waited outside for about thirty minutes. My brother finally got home and was with his friend. He asked me why I was waiting outside. I told him what I just saw. His friend and him didn't believe me. They went up to the house while I waited outside. Not a minute later, my brother and his friend come running back outside to me and told me what they saw. They said they saw the same thing with the doors and also heard yelling coming from the basement. My brother and his friend proceeded to leave me alone outside while they went to a rec center for teenagers. I wasn't old enough, so I just waited for my dad to get home from work. 
Eventually, while waiting for my dad, it was about an hour, thought he was taking too long and decided to just run in the house and into the living room and hope I didn't get killed. I did just that, and all of the paranormal activity stopped before I even got back into the house. I think if it was still happening, I would have just continued to wait outside. My brother and I told my dad what happened, but I don't think he believed us or came up with some random explanation. I don't really remember how exactly he reacted to that. One other thing my dad experienced was a dark figure of a man that would walk down the hallway and walk around downstairs in the basement. My dad told us that, well, when we were away in the U.S. for the summer and he was home alone, he would see a dark figure open doors and go into rooms. I remember one story he said was when he was downstairs in the basement. The basement included another hallway, two bedrooms for my brother and me, and a bathroom with a laundry machine and a dryer. While in the basement he was doing laundry, kept our bedroom doors closed since we weren't there. But suddenly he heard a door open and went to look down the hallway. Said he saw someone walk into my bedroom. He checked, but didn't see anyone, but told us that it was really creepy and became a believer after a few instances of similar paranormal experiences in the house. My friends that have stayed over have seen this black figure of a man walking around, even seen doors randomly opening or closing. I eventually even had to move to a bedroom upstairs since the stuff downstairs that I saw kept me from wanting to sleep in my own bedroom. I have so many stories of things that have happened in that house, but don't want to overload everyone with stories. I lived in that house for five years and enjoyed most of my time there, except for the occasional ghost shit that happened. Real Life Creepy Pasta and it was from a Pokemon game. So I assume most people have read up on creepy pastas, especially the popular Pokemon ones, right? Well, personally, I've never found much interest in creepy pastas, but my brother did, so that's how I found out about them. Anyway, this is about my old Pokemon Gold game I had since it first came out when I was like 14ish and whatnot. Of course, I felt that nostalgic desire and played it on my old Game Boy Advance. It was going pretty well, unlike the last three minutes into the game. Or rather, until. I felt wetness on my fingers and there was a lingering smell of fuel fluid. Obviously, I thought it was weird, so I turned to my Game Boy to see what was going on, and to my horror and shock, I saw my batteries had melted on my fingers through the case cover. Not only that, but my game was working perfectly fine despite it all. Soon enough I blinked and everything was normal again. My fingers weren't wet with battery fluid. I didn't smell strange smells anymore. It was like it never happened. But it did, and it freaked me the hell out. So I sold my Game Boy Advance and Pokemon Gold at a pawn shop. It's their problem now. To this day, it baffles me to no end, and I have no idea why it happened or what caused it. Lost Kitty Cat Returns Wholesome Story So back in October of 2022... By the end of the month, just before my cat's Vale's birthday of turning seven, I had to put her down, dying at age six. The reason for this was that she was born with asthma and diabetes and suffered a lot throughout her life. But despite myself being poor, I would skip meals or even live in hun well, unhealthy ways just to pay thousands of dollars to make sure she would have a long, happy, healthy enough life. I paid for all of her inhalers every month, and was about $8,000 in debt to vets, which I had to make promise payments for, which I was good at keeping. I saw Vale like she was a daughter of mine. I 
can't have kids, but I prefer cats anyway. She was my entire world to me, and they made sure that she knew how much I loved her every day. One day, however, she stopped eating, drinking or playing, and only slept in my room in the box fort that I made for her. I took her to the vet one last time. They gave me sad expressions, told me that it was time to let her go, because by next morning I would have awoken to her dead regardless. It was the hardest decision of my life, and as much as I wanted to run away and not watch the life drain from her eyes, I stayed there in the vet room and pet her, singing her the Dango family song that she always loved. Once I got back home and stepped inside, my brother was supporting me. I blacked out my brother told me I fell to my knees and screamed and cried. I was a complete mess. Next thing I know, I'm awoken in my room crying out my eyes in my bed. End up crying myself to sleep too. That night I woke up at around midnight-ish. I think I looked around and saw some kind of, like, astral-like plane surrounding me. Blue gradients of colors and enchanting appearances of blue sparkling dust. It felt warm and cozy. I even forgot I had mental disabilities and didn't feel any pain at all. Next thing that happened was that I saw Vale jump up from the shadows of the blue dust and jump next to me in bed and sleep there like she usually did. She was curling up and cuddling close to my chest. I wrapped my arms around her and hugged her tight but gently. I told her I loved her so much. It felt like she was telling me the same. Like she was telling me how much she appreciates the sacrifices I did for her. After that, I fell back asleep. And when I woke up the next morning, most of my pain in my heart was gone. I felt more at ease, especially knowing that she no longer was suffering. Skip onward to November. I ended up finding a kitten who I named Maple. She was very friendly with me, and from the start, got used to living with me pretty quickly. As I left my room to get something from my brother's room, for a moment, I saw Vale sitting on the top of the couch. Only saw her for a moment as I blinked, and then she disappeared. At first, I thought I was just seeing things, so I shrugged it off. A week later, I was walking to the bathroom, and in the corner of my eye, I saw Vale quickly walk out of sight from behind the laundry hamper. I started getting suspicious, but still brushed it off. Both times Maple was in my room, so it wasn't her. One night I had awoken to the same warm and cozy feeling again. I opened my eyes and looked over at my computer chair, which I always kept next to my bed because both Vale and Maeve to sleep in it while being next to me. To see not only the astral-looking planes in my room again, but Vale and Maple facing each other as if talking. Obviously they weren't, but I felt like I could hear telepathically what they were saying. It was the most heartwarming thing I ever heard anybody say about me. I felt like I could hear Vale telling Maple, Take good care of her. She's a very good person with a big heart, and she will love you unconditionally. Her heart's still a little bit broken, but if you keep her close, it will surely heal fell back to sleep shortly after, and when I had awoken, I was surprised to see Mabel now lying next to me like Vale did every night. When she noticed I was awake, she flopped herself all over me in the cutest way possible. Gave me a smile, and I pet her and kissed her, thanking her. A week ago, I saw another glimpse of Vale. It seemed like she was sitting on the stepping stool that I had near the pantry. I just tripped over the stool, before disappearing again. I was certainly sure that it was hers this time, and not just because of what happened that one night, but because Maple was lying in front of the shoes ahead of me near the other wall. I'm certain Vale is watching over me, letting me know that she's still there for me. It makes me happy knowing she's here. It makes me happy knowing I gave her a life with lots of love. I'll do the same for Maple as well. Min Min Lights, Australia 
Just wanted to throw this in here to see if anybody else had seen anything like this in Central West in New South Wales. About 19 years ago near my hometown, I used to get driven to catch a bus from a town called Parks about 1.5 hours from my hometown to go visit my then boyfriend in another town several hours away. The bus I had to travel to... The bus I had to travel to get to left from Parks... Nope, this is me being stupid this time. The bus I had to travel to to get from left to Parks at around 2 a.m. And it arrived back at night and my dad would pick me up. On two separate occasions, we saw something strange. On the first occasion, we were driving alone in the country road in between two towns, the road running in between farms and fenced off from the road. There was hills behind these farms that were silhouetted against the often bright night sky. We saw a big ball of light traveling down the hill. It was parallel to our car, probably a couple of kilometers away. Thought it was just a truck possibly driving along there. Until we realized there wasn't a road there. And it was one light, not two. Like car headlights. And it wasn't a motorcycle. Just because there wasn't a road there didn't mean it wasn't a vehicle, though. But it moved so smoothly and quickly. We both just thought it was odd. We didn't really think much about it until a few weeks later we were doing the same drive late at night possibly a bit after midnight, and we saw the same light in the same area moving quickly and smoothly again. This time, Dad decided to stop the car, turn off the engine. When he did that, the light came down the hill and hurtling toward us across the farm fields and over the fence that divided the farms from the road, and it was fast. The ball of light was probably about two meters off the ground and had a diameter of around one and a half meters. It was gigantic. Silent, and it was a ball of light that kind of fluctuated and rotated as it moved. It slowed, hovered in the middle of the road behind our car, probably about 50 meters behind us. I got so scared, but Dad was fascinated, watching it inquisitively. I was panicking and yelling to start the car and drive. Not sure what happened after that. Dad turned the engine on and we started driving. We never saw that light again, but that was the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. And every now and again, I mention it to my dad just to know that I'm not going crazy. But dad always confirms every detail of it with me. I'm glad we were both there, otherwise I'd think I was going mad. I hadn't heard of Min Min lights until years later. The things that people have described as Min Min lights match exactly what we saw. I'll never forget it. My dying fiancé saw people that I couldn't. I was with my fiancé for almost 12 years before he was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. Towards the end, he was sent home from the hospital and put on in-home hospice care. It was only a matter of time. The first night home, after everybody visiting had left, I was home alone with him. I could tell he was slowly losing his mind. The cancer had spread. He was saying things that didn't make sense. For example, he would pick up an imaginary item, hand said item to me, and say, Here. Put this in your purse. Anyways, I was sitting in a chair next to the hospice bed when he said, Why is she here? And this is while he was looking past me. I asked, Who? He said, Your gram. My grandmother lived where we lived. We moved in after she was put into an assisted living facility because she had dementia. She passed away in 2017. I told him to follow her and see what she wanted. But he got so scared saying he doesn't want to go. The next night sitting next to him, he asked me, Who are they? I asked who? And he said, In the hallway. But nothing
nothing was there. A few nights later, he saw my grandmother again. This time he wasn't scared, but I didn't press him further considering his mentality was still declining, and he would get easily agitated. I remember thinking, of all people, why is he seeing my Graham, and not any of his deceased relatives or friends? He passed away the next morning, holding my hand and surrounded by family. As if it all wasn't creepy to begin with, he died on the fourth anniversary of my grandmother's death. It's been two years since he passed, and I still sense him, especially at night when I'm in bed. I feel him in the corner of the room just watching me. Sometimes I'll say out loud, please don't scare me, and I'll feel his presence walk across the room out of the door. I've since moved, and I sense him there as well. I don't exactly see him, but I know exactly how he's dressed and how he looks now. He looks healthy again, like his old self. I'm wondering why he hasn't moved on, but my guess is he's maybe waiting well, to make sure I'm truly okay and happy. I have had a few experiences. I lived desert hot springs, a city a few miles away from the Palm Springs, California. The first experience I remember is when I was about six years old. I was playing on a table while watching TV. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a girl walking into my room. I remember excitedly calling out for my cousin, thinking that it was her. At that moment, my mom popped out of the kitchen to tell me that no one's home but us. A few years later in a different home, I get home from school and go to my room to play video games. I set myself up on my bed and a few minutes later I feel like someone jumped onto my bed. I pretended I didn't feel anything. I just kept playing. A few months later I feel something wake me up. I see a face next to mine. I shut my eyes hoping to go back to sleep, but of course it's not happening. Quickly get up and turn on the light. I never moved faster in my life. Those were the major experiences. There's quite a few small things that happened. Funny things, a few months ago my aunt asked me if I felt any sort of presence in that house. I wasn't the only one that experienced possible paranormal activity in that house. Maybe eight years later in my mom's current home, around 10 p.m., my mom calls out scared that something climbed over the wall into her yard. Now, at the time, there was only a few homes and miles and miles of nothing but desert. I go outside with the rifle, thinking maybe it was a pack of coyotes trying to get our small dogs since there are reports of coyotes attacking pets around the area. She tells me to come back inside quick, tells me what she saw. She described it as a black mass or blob, completely shapeless. Ask Reddit. In high school, I agreed to house sit for a friend of my grandparents while she was out of town over the weekend. It happened to be a Halloween over that weekend, too. She had a lot of Native American art pieces and artifacts all over her house, as well as a collection of these old school oil cans. I don't know why, but I picked one up and pressed the button on one of them a few times, and it made it distinct metallic popping sound. Thought it was kind of cool. The lady also had an old deaf dog I was kind of charged with feeding and caring for, too. The first night there, I stayed up late watching movies from her DVD collection, then finally went to be after midnight. I woke up startled and heard noises coming from the living area. It sounded like a bunch of different oil cans making that popping sound. The dog was up and standing and facing the closed bedroom door. Got a rush of chills and a knot in my stomach, but stayed put till morning. The next day was Halloween. I asked my best friend if she could stay the night with me, which she agreed to. I told her what had happened. She thought that it was odd, but also incredulous. 
We watched a movie and eventually went to bed. Woke up around the same time in the middle of the night to the sound and the dog doing the same thing. Then I looked over at my friend, thinking I should wake her up, but right as I thought she sat up, got out of bed without acknowledging me, went to the bathroom attached to the bedroom and brushed her teeth. She returned to bed without saying a word to me, laid back down to go to sleep. In all the sleepovers we'd ever had, which were quite a few, I'd never seen her sleepwalk before. I lost my spot. Once again, I was too scared to do anything and stayed in bed paralyzed with fear until I eventually fell asleep. The next morning after we'd both woken up, I asked her if she remembered walking up to brush her teeth. She said no, but was creeped out by it because she'd never sleepwalked before to her knowledge. Then we went out to the living room and saw that the furniture in the living room had shifted a bit. The fluffy carpeting showed the indents of where the furniture legs had been previously, about two inches away. Thankfully, that was my last night having to watch the house, and I still don't know what to make of it. But I made sure to always have an excuse whenever the lady asked if I wanted to house it again. Eventually, she stopped asking. Slick. I saw something in my bedroom when I was a kid. I saw something when I was a kid. It was in a vacation house my parents built, and I was very little. It was next to the beach. They did a very smart thing on the roof. It was a direct tile roof, and each room one of the tiles was glass made, so we had natural sunlight during the day and little moonlight during the night. That said, let's go on. I slept there for some years. The family used to go there for most of the holidays. The room at night was very pleasant to sleep. The little light coming from the glass tile was very nice. Moonlight. I was sleeping in the same room with my sister and my aunt. Two beds and a mattress on the ground, which my sister slept there. Door closed, window closed. Only light is coming from that glass tile. I don't remember how it started, but in the same moment I looked to the door and saw something standing by the mattress. Some shadow with a little weird, weak glow. Watched it get down, like crouch very slow for like five seconds. Then quickly pulled my blanket up over me and I stood there quiet, awake, eyes open, under the blanket. After a few minutes, I heard a breath very near to my face, only the blanket separating. Then I heard a very long and strong breath, like when you drink something very, very cold and you kind of do like a ah. After that, all went silent. Could not sleep for a while. Pulled my blanket down to see the room, and it was pitch black, no light from the glass tile. It was very, very dark. And I remember only to look to the wall and see something spinning in the wall. It was very dark, but I could see something spinning. I pulled my blanket up again and only remember waking up in the morning and telling what happened to my sister. My aunt made fun about me, joking. And I just never spoke about this again. The spinning thing, I don't know what the hell it was. I mean, it was in the wall like a little moldier, but spinning. Two other incidents with other people in the same place. One, a friend of mine. We were teenagers at the time. We was laying down in the front of the house and bench. None of nowhere stood up and looked behind like searching for someone. He was very scared saying somebody just whispered in his ear something like leave here. Two. This time I was in my twenties. A cousin was taking a shower in the bathroom and the rest of the family was in the main room eating and watching TV. It was evening. Then the boy just opened the door and ran only in towels and all with soap and shampoo on the hair, saying he heard something out of the bathroom. Little window leading to the back of the house and the tipper window closed on itself. That's it. 
the house itself doesn't have bad energy or something like that. We all love to go there and spend holidays. But this happened. What is a tipper window? Cheers. There's an unexplained dog toy in my apartment, and I have no idea how it got in. I woke up this morning and I found a little squeaky dog ball in front of my bedroom door. My main concern with this is that I do not have a dog and never did. My sister and I got a sweet little cat about four days ago and she's adjusting well. But for the time being, she's indoors only and has lots of cat toys that we just bought for her. This ball is certainly not one of them. She won't even touch it and usually she'll play with anything that touches the floor. Whose dog toy is this? And how did it get in my apartment overnight? My sister attests that she saw it underneath the stairs leading up to our apartment at some point. So it probably belongs to the neighbors downstairs. I think they got a puppy recently. But I still don't understand how it got in here. I myself have never seen the toy in my life. We're both a bit of Noro spicy, if you will. And our short-term memories aren't fantastic. But going all the way downstairs to take a random dog toy and bring it back up is something we'd remember doing. Noro spicy. We're both pretty light sleepers. So don't really suspect that somebody got in, stole nothing, and then left only my neighbor's dog toy. That, and we have a motion detector doorbell that didn't catch a thing since 9 p.m. That was when I went downstairs for a quick workout. My mind goes to sleepwalking. Maybe, but we've never had a history of that. The front door was locked, everything was in its place except for this small, squeaky intruder. The ball, not my cat. The only clue is my sister's massive random headache this morning. But so far, we've chalked it up to her probably coming down with something. That often happens right before one of us gets sick. In other words, I extremely doubt it was one of us that brought it in somehow. Ghost dog, world's strangest to break in, I don't know. So yeah, not the most exciting paranormal story ever told. But I consider myself to have a high tolerance to weirdness. And this is still freaking me out a bit. Anyone have any theories for me to think about? I would like an extrapolation of this Noro Spicy. Get back to me about that. Strange, unnerving dream. Now I'm going to start with saying this is most likely just a dream and nothing paranormal. But to this day, something still doesn't feel right. I remember a dream I've had as a kid, probably five to seven years old. Can't remember most of the exact details, but the most memorable part was where I walked along a road with houses on one side. The other side being a white brick staircase going down with brick railings. I couldn't see anything else past that. There was a fog, prevalent in many of my dreams. The only other thing of note is being a kid sitting on the railing. Again, I don't remember exact details, but it was a boy. The strangest part was how his face looked to be almost censored, like my brain wasn't letting me see it. There was some kind of blackness over his face or eyes which really unnerved me to think about. There's many times where I question everything about this dream, but that's definitely something I witnessed. What happened next was him simply walking toward me, and that was it. Another strange thing was how this was quite literally the scariest thing that's ever happened to me so far in my life. Doesn't sound like much, and I understand, but something never feels right when I think about what happened. No other dream has made me deeply unsettled, and sometimes I sit there wondering, 
Was it really a dream? Was it a vision? Did it really happen? Sometimes I imagine it as a phantom memory in a way. can never pinpoint where this lies in my brain, but it's deep within. I feel like I need answers in some form. I just want to know what somebody thinks about this. I'll say once more that it may simply be a normal scary dream I had as a kid, but I want different viewpoints. Ghost in an Abandoned Apartment I'm 21 now. Back in the days when I was 16, I had a girlfriend. She and I went into an apartment which was on the ninth floor, and also the top floor. Also, also, it was night on that day around 8 p.m. in the night as much as I remember. So we were just finding a place where nobody can come. It's not a good idea. I found that place just for making out there. That apartment had two empty rooms. Two bathrooms, one hall, one kitchen, which was unfinished. We went there inside the room for making out. As we were making out, we heard a loud thudding which came from the bathroom, which was maybe three feet away from us. Thought it was just a pigeon or something else. We ignored it. Maybe after two or three minutes later of the same bathroom, we heard water dripping on the floor. So I tried to open the door to the bathroom, and it wasn't opening. Thought it was stuck, just because it was an empty apartment for a long time. But luckily, this bathroom was attached from the hall, and the same room we were in it had two doors. I tried to open it from the other door, and it still wasn't opening. Then I looked under the door, and I saw a shadowy figure behind the door. It was like someone's legs, like there was a person inside the bathroom who was trying to stop me holding the door from the inside for not letting me in. Then suddenly the water started dripping fast and I got more curious about it. I was thinking what was inside or who was inside and the last time I pushed the door really hard that I'd opened, maybe it was for some milliseconds and it closed again, like really hard. My girlfriend got scared and whispered in my ears and told me that I just saw two glowing eyes and shining teeth like it was smiling at me, or maybe at us. When I heard it, my body went cold and had goosebumps all over my body. I held her hand and literally ran outside before something bad happened to us. Quiet Night, 2005. Only time I've had an experience. My house is a long strip of living room to hallway, to the end where my bedroom lie. The way my bed set when I lay on one side, I face a corner. But when I lay the other way, I can see my perfectly at my door. If the door is open, though, I can see all the way through my house to end other end of the living room with the fireplace. I'd say the distance from my bed to the fireplace was about 40 to 50 feet, and my bed to the end of the hallway was probably 20 feet. The only thing I could hear was a small grandfather clock tick on the shelf in the living room with a few chimes every 15 minutes. It was a very quiet night, the year 2005, when I experienced an odd occurrence that I still to this day have never seen anything like it again. I was sleeping with the door open, as I did, because I was five, and did not like to be cut off from the rest of the house for fear of being alone. My mom's bedroom door was to the left looking out my room and was perpendicular with my brother's being the same but on the right. I was woken up in the middle of the night, but for no particular reason, and was facing the corner of my room. I noticed I could not really fall back asleep, so I tried turning to my other side to see if that might be more comfortable to fall asleep. Once I do, I noticed something almost immediately. I saw a dark figure standing a few feet from the end of the hallway into the living room. 
The figure was very tall, being about six feet or more. It was hunched over very slightly to its right and was very still. No one in the house at the time was that tall, and so I was curious on who it could be. I wanted to be brave and wave to see if it was me seeing something, but with no movement or response. I slowly uncovered myself. I stood up and walked through my door. I took my time making my way down the hall, passing my mom and brother's room and the bathroom door in the middle of the hallway. The figure never changed, still a dark figure at the same height and shape, until I finally got close enough to panic as it still had not moved and was towering over me about six or seven feet away from me. I knew there was a light switch just to the left of the end of the hall around the corner which I scrambled to flip on. I got it, which turned on, turned on the dining room light, just to the left, and the light poured through the wide doorway and illuminated part of the living room it was connected to. The figure was lit up. To my surprise, it was just a standing vacuum. Relieved, I looked around the vacuum and then shrug it off and turn the light off and go lay in bed. Once I start to lay down and turn over to face the hallway again, I can see the vacuum outlined perfectly, skinnier and shorter than the figure I thought I saw earlier, which has made me wonder ever since. How come a figure that was six feet tall and was perfectly made out to be a person suddenly become a vacuum at my height at five years old, and smaller to be the outline of a vacuum now? Being a person of deductive reasoning, I can only figure it could be my eyes, possibly adjusting from dark to light to dark again. But even then, the figure never returned, even later in the night. Now, something that might fuel this story is that my mom's boyfriend actually killed himself around the time of my first or second birthday while no one was home. Brutal. I asked my mom later how tall he was. Turns out he was just a bit taller than six feet as he was tall. Do I think it was a ghost? Not sure. But do I think it was a ghost? It was him? Yes. I think there's a ghost stealing my stuff. So some months ago I was looking for a watch that my grandmother had gifted me. I remember putting it in my jewelry box. A couple of days later I couldn't find it. Thought maybe I had put it somewhere else, but that wasn't the case. I looked in the whole room but couldn't find it. Like two months had passed and my grandmother asked me about the watch. I told her that I needed to have it adjusted because it didn't fit me. She told me she could fix it for me. Told me to go look for it but I didn't even know where it was and I asked her if by any chance she could have it. She told me no. After that, I cleaned my room. I clean my room and closet every Sunday, again hoping to find it. I asked my partner for help and we looked absolutely everywhere, especially the closet, because that's where I always put stuff and forget about it later. But we didn't find absolutely anything. Thought to myself that I was going to never find that watch and forgot about it. A month passed. Random day, I opened the closet to look for a charger, and there it was, the watch literally right in front of my eyes. I quickly called my partner and showed her. She asked me where it was, and I explained to her. I asked her if she had anything to do with it, like maybe she was playing a prank on me, but she told me no. After that, I honestly didn't gave it much thought, and thought I was crazy. Some days ago, I think it was Saturday, my partner's AirPods went missing. We looked on the bed, under the pillows, blankets, on the drawers, the vanity, all of my full and empty purses. We also looked at her purse, and they were nowhere to be found. My girlfriend remembered she could find them with find my in parentheses, and it said that she had left them at work. Later, she was looking for something else in her purse. I was on my phone. That's when we both looked up and the headphones were right there in the middle of the bed. 
I asked her if she had found them, and she swore she hadn't and asked me if I put them there. This time she thought I was playing a prank on her, but I wasn't. She told me, what if there's a ghost? Which for some reason made me think of some edibles that went missing some months ago. They were in my closet. No, my girlfriend didn't eat them. She gets sick from them. I also had some jewelry or miscellaneous stuff missing, but I didn't think of it until now. Me and my girlfriend believe heavily on ghosts, especially since I've had a lot of paranormal experiences ever since I was little, but nobody ever believed me. For example, some nights when I close my eyes, I can feel something above me, but it's taking pictures of me and I can see the flash, but when I wake up there's nothing there. This also happens to my girlfriend. When I go to sleep, I can feel something sit by my feet and just stare at me. There was a night where something was choking me. And also, I've always had a presence around me ever since I was little. But I've never felt anything malignant about this one. So, is there a ghost, or are we just crazy? 4060 Dispelling Negative Energy I think about this night a lot. I've experienced some pretty weird paranormal things over the course of my life so far. But this one night in particular will always be what made me 100% a believer, if I wasn't already. It was about two years ago when me and my husband had a roommate living with us. We've all been on the spiritual journey. You know of the magical side of things. But the roommate was a little more in-depth than ever we were at the time. A little more in-depth than even we were at the time. Well, long story short, he wanted to do a ritual to get rid of some of the negative energy in his life. We, of course, were with him to lend some of our own energy and get rid of some of our own negative energies. Once we were done, Mind you, this is at night. It's dark outside. It's beside the bonfire. Back porch lights on, and our roommate started tracking and following something on the edge of our wood lines. We do live in Tennessee, all up in the Appalachian. And where we live has a lot of bent-over trees that didn't just happen naturally. If any of y'all know anything about Native American culture, then you know about bent trees. So... We believe our property sits right in the middle of a spiritual pathway. Things are always crossing through our property. Nothing bad, usually just curious. But anyways, while our roommate is following this entity along the tree line, me and my husband are trying to see what he's seeing, but walking slowly behind him. The roommate finally gets up to the back porch and our property starts going uphill behind the house. So we've got a retaining wall that's a good four foot difference from the main ground, and just keeps going up. I'm right behind my roommate at this point. He's pointing at this thing, saying it's right there. Come here where I'm standing. And as I do, and when I tell you when my human eyes finally laid on this tall, faceless, very dark, gray matter, humanoid looking being, yeah, I fucking believed every bit of the afterlife, alien life, folklore shit I've ever heard. I watched this being literally turn left and keep walking down her tree line. We followed and kept our eyes on it the whole time. There was a moment when all three of us were facing it again and I had a moment of fear. The thing actually began to walk towards us. And at that moment our roommate yelled at it to leave. That it's not welcome to be with us anymore. We turned around and quickly went inside. I truly believe it was our negative energies that we had dispelled that manifested into a being of its own. It never felt harmful, but sad and lonely. I'll never forget that experience, honestly. I have plenty of other experience with said roommate I truly believe that he has something attached to him. But that's the one that will forever stick with me. I'll never forget locking eyes with the thing, even though it didn't really have eyes. Just a gray face.
something wanted me to go downstairs. So I used to live in this house from when I was in a prick pre-K. Aha. Uh -huh. Up until third grade. I used to have weird, scary dreams and would see dark figures in the night as I lay awake trying to sleep. I chalked it up to just reading goosebumps and my imagination running wild from those stories. One night, though, it kind of took a turn that still gives me chills to this day. And I've never told anyone beside my mom, either. I was laying down, and I remember it was the weekend, because my sisters stayed over at my cousin's house for a sleepover. No one else was in the house beside me and my mom. I was up watching TV because I couldn't sleep. My mom was passed out in her room. She was tired from working two jobs. It got a little late, and I was getting tired. I went to go lay down, and I was just lying there. The one bathroom that we had was connected between my mom and me and my sister's room. As I lay there, not being able to sleep, the door of the bathroom opened up from our side and a voice speaks out to me and says, Hey, can you do me a favor and go downstairs to the basement and get me some toilet paper? I was scared of the basement. Old house, dark, cold, nothing down there. Thinking it might have been my mom, I say. There's toilet paper in there. I remember because my mom, before she went to sleep, she made me put another one on the roll before she lied down. I get up as the light is off in my room, and in the bathroom I see a dark figure on the toilet. I quickly turn on the light, wondering what my mom's doing, just sitting in the dark. Wouldn't you know, nothing was there. I'm like, what the fuck? Maybe I'm just tired. Then I hear something coming from the basement. I go to the door and I'm standing on the top of the stairs. And I see what looks like a kid playing down in the dark. The light to downstairs is at the end of the stairs down there. I don't think to even try to turn the lights on. Thinking my sisters might have came back and me not realize it. I yell out. What are you guys doing down there? A voice that sounded like my sister says, We're playing hide and seek. Come on down if you want to play. I reply and say, Well, turn on the light. I can't see the stairs. No reply came back. I stand there and I see this black shadow just stand at the bottom of the steps. I stayed there for a couple of seconds. I quickly closed the door after it didn't move or say anything back. I ran to my mom's room and explained what happened. She believed me and never made it seem like I was making any of it up. I also told her I used to have really bad dreams and see shadows flying and running around in my room also. My mom had me sit in the dark and pray over me. I rebuked everything I could think of that night. And since that day I've never seen something or heard something even close to that in my life. I'm 30 now. And that's the end of tonight's stories. Hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Appreciate you. Sweet dreams. Welcome to the enigmatic world of Paranormal M. Prepare to have your beliefs challenged and your imagination ignited. Subscribe now and turn on notifications for a constant stream of supernatural stories. Weird Realization I've got two experiences that shook me. Did Ouija board with a friend at school when I was 12. We asked a question and it started moving to yes. Thought my friend was moving it, but he freaked out, took his hand off, and it was still moving. Then he hit my hand off the Ouija board piece, and for the rest of that whole day, my right arm was numb. 
No one wanted to take the Ouija shit home. So I decided to, and well, for two weeks straight, I was waking up at exactly 3 a.m. every single night. That was, until I threw it out in a bin at school and it stopped. Woke up around 3 a.m. at night to a weird sound of something like a blanket moving for about two minutes. Finally decided to look down at where my feet were. And in the corner of my bed, the blanket was moving up and down, almost like there was a hand underneath pushing it up and down. I bolted out of the room and my door was closed. There were no animals in my room. Still can't explain it. Now I'm 19. And I've realized once I touched Ouija board my life, which was great, took a 180. I started suffering with very bad anxiety and thoughts which turned into depression at the age of 13 or 14. And I still suffer till this day. Maybe bad spirits can cause mental illness. My past life as a U.S. soldier during the Vietnam War. My mom and I are spiritual, and she contacted the spirit of my best friend yesterday when I was having a mental breakdown. He's from my past life as a Vietnam soldier. I got to know him since I was a young child. We were best friends. I can vaguely remember that his name was Damien or something. I basically grew up with him and his family. They treated me as one of them. A very nice family at that time, but once the Vietnam War started, things took a turn. During our deployment, I was very paranoid of being ambushed by the Vietnamese, so I slept with a gun in my hands. Due to all the mental issues going on at that time and the dark environment, I accidentally shot my best friend because I heard someone walking toward me in a very odd way. I was devastated. Turned batshit insane after that. I was no longer suitable for duty, so they sent me home. I was full of regret, shame, and grief. People around me were treating me harshly because, well, we veterans failed to win the war. And the family members of the best friend even placed a curse on me out of anger and resentment. The curse that I would never be happy or fulfilled again. This curse haunted me in the current life where I'm reincarnated into. I always ask myself, why I feel like I'm not worth it, or why the things in my life happen the way they did. Now I feel like the pieces of the puzzle are fitting together. The purpose of my current life is to lift the curse and become mentally strong again. I can finally have peace with myself now, which I didn't achieve with psychotherapy before. Moral of the story. Unresolved mental issues and curses can haunt you in your next life. Be sure to cope with them and be open-minded and disciplined to meditation. This way you gain insight about previous lives and you can prevent yourself from making the same mistakes this time. Scary Experience with Big Brother So this was in 2017. My brother was sleeping alone in his own room. He was tucked in his sheets. He saw that the sheets were literally rising over him, like something wanted to suffocate him under the sheets with no air supply. He was resisting, but as hard as he resisted, as fast as the sheets were growing on him, he then said he tried to scream, but couldn't. Then he heard a loud clang. Lord Hunamans, a legend in Hinduism, a statue in our home, it fell down. He could move freely now. He ran straight to my parents and sobbed. My parents were exchanging uncomfortable looks. I saw booze. I came out too. Oh, excuse me. I saw because I came out too. 
Then I noticed there was something black, like a figure watching over us from a, like a five meter distance, waiting to attack again, but couldn't. I believed, maybe I believed it to be his nightmare, but I really couldn't figure out till, well, how a six foot tall statue fell down upon its own. It was kept itself up straight for five years. I think my room used to be haunted. Hello everyone. Word of introduction first. My name is Mark. I'm in my early 20s and I've always been fascinated by paranormal stuff. But I'd never been a believer. It was like atheist studying Bible type of a situation. But I actually happened to personally experience some weird stuff and my room was haunted on two occasions. First time was when I was 11. My sister was nine. So when my family was slowly moving into a new house and renovating it, a set of white walls, no furniture, me and my sister on many occasions followed to explore our new neighborhood. Once, when we got back from our exploring trips, we just sat in our empty room and threw a ball to each other, singing some random nursery rhymes. We were going at it for something over half an hour when suddenly the ball stopped midway to my sister and got back to my hand. I was freaking. She was. And we refused to visit for a while. And a small clarification. It was this, like, heavier dog-chewing ball. And all windows were closed. So no wind and since room was empty... No bouncing from something. As adult, I actually spoke about it to my mom, suspecting it may have been a false memory or something. But she actually confirmed me and my sister once really lost over, excuse me, really lost our nuts over something like that. And even refused to sleep in our rooms for over a week and it made her so tired. Next haunting, if you can call it that, happened four years later. This time I was not present, but it happened in the same room, and I need to explain a bit of our room situation. I shared my room with my younger brother, ten years old at the time, the haunting. My sister had her room next door. So me and my brother went to my cousin's place to have a sleepover. Since our room was bigger and we had a bigger TV and a DVD player, my sister decided that she wants to sleep in there. She goes there, watches a few movies, goes to sleep. In the middle of the night, my fitness slash stationary bike starts running, literally like someone was just using it. It was electric, but all electric was long overcooked and damaged. Besides... Those were trackers and were incapable of moving the bike. So my sister started screaming and she went to our parents' room. When we got back, she was scared shitless. And I actually needed to move her room for a while since she refused to sleep alone at all. This story was also confirmed by her mother. Also, I remember sleeping in a room on my noble exile. Noble exile? Somebody fill me in on what a noble exile is. No pets at the time in the house. Paranormal incidents I've been experiencing recently. The first incident is from when I was in fifth grade, so I was around eleven. I've always been really scared of the dark, so I slept with my parents till I was in sixth grade. All kids my age did sleep in their own beds, so to make me more used to sleeping alone, my parents brought my teen-sized bed into their room, had it beside their bed. 
I'll put up a diagram at the end of this one to better visualize it. I've had sleep paralysis for as long as I can remember. It comes and goes. So I'll have it every day for a week, and then not have any for two months. I remember having terrible sleep paralysis the night before that night. So I woke up in the middle of the night to grab water from my parents' bedside table. I remember waking up and sitting on my bed, still deciding whether or not I want to walk alone in the dark. I looked over to my left to my parents' bed. They were both sound asleep. Then my head turned to the door of the bedroom, which was unlocked. I saw two tall people. They were shadow figures, but I didn't understand at the time. I specifically remember thinking they looked exactly like my parents. The man was about four or five inches taller than the woman. The woman was slightly healthier, and they both stood side by side, not moving. I was confused and thought it must be my parents having woken up, gone to get something. But when I turned back to see if they were sleeping, they were still lying there snoring lightly. The scariest part is when I turned back to the door. The couple were still there. I was freaked out of my mind, but I didn't want to wake my parents up. My mother had been ill, barely getting any sleep as it was. So I just went over onto their bed and cuddled up next to them. The shadow figures weren't there the next morning. I told my parents the whole story, but they thought I'd been dreaming. To this day, I can still remember exactly how they both looked. Probably because of how many times I peeked over at my parents' blanket to see if they'd gone. The next story isn't half as interesting, but it is worth telling. This is one of the more recent ones. Keep in mind, nothing else happened after the previous one, or at least I didn't notice anything, at least for another five or six years. My grandparents recently came to visit us. They've been here for about a month now. They've been sleeping in my room, because they wanted AC. So I sleep in the guest room. Last week we had really distant relatives from my dad's side of the family who we've never met before, and my mom and I didn't even know they existed, even though we have a really small, connected family. They brought us, for no reason whatsoever, a large wooden jewelry box. Looks really old, but well-kept. She told us it's a family heirloom, and that her grandmother gave it to her. We took it in. After they left, my parents went to drop them off, and my grandparents and I were tidying up the house. While doing that, I packed the jewelry box back up, assuming my mom wouldn't need it as she already has one, and kept it up in the storage. When my mom got home, I'd already been asleep. She unpacked the box and kept it on the top shelf in the guest room. When I woke up, that was the first thing I saw, and it gave me very eerie vibes. I didn't like it there. I told my mom to put it away or move it from there but she thought it looked best on the top shelf in there. I didn't argue further, but ever since that's been there, I've been experiencing more. I've had a really hard time falling asleep. On Thursday, I'd been laying in bed, not able to fall asleep for two or three hours, just staring at the box. And yesterday, my mom took my grandparents out shopping while my dad was at work. I was home alone. I'd cut up some fruit to eat for brunch and put it in a bowl. I'd just turn around to wash the knife when I heard a loud bang like ceramic falling onto the counter. I turned around and saw most of the fruit fallen out of the bowl. Later at night yesterday, I'd walked into my bathroom. The switch to my bathroom is outside, so I turned it on, as I always do, and stepped in. As soon as I set both, excuse me, both feet, the light went out. I leaned over the door, still inside the bathroom, thinking the switch might have accidentally turned off, but it was still on. I set a foot out to see what had happened, and why the light was still out, and instantly the light turned back on. I know it wasn't a power fluctuation because every other light in the house was still on when that happened. It was almost as if I'd stepped on a pressure plate and the light switched on, and as soon as I lifted my foot it turned off 
still freaking out thinking about it. Today I woke up a little bit late since I'd been freaked out at what happened last night. And on top of it, I had a sleep paralysis attack. When I woke up, my grandfather came to the room I'd been sleeping in, asked if I had gone to the bathroom in the night. I told him no, and asked what happened. He told me there was a huge blood stain in the middle of the floor. I'm the only one in the house that has periods anymore. And if it wasn't me, then it must be my grandparents. They're the only ones that use the bathroom. First things first. They hadn't ever been to the bathroom since 9 p.m. last night. There was no stain then. Just to be sure, I checked their feet and legs that there was no wound or anything that could have caused such a large blood stain. Absolutely nothing. I don't actually have a picture of it because I don't think to take a picture of it in the moment. I was so terrified. Looking at the blood does make me a little dizzy, so I did have to go outside for a while. My grandfather did clean it off before I could get back, but you kind of have to imagine. It was a large circular stain with a foot smudging it. The foot was slightly larger than the regular sized foot, but that could have been my grandfather accidentally stepping in it. I've been terrified for the last two hours. So much is going wrong and I don't know what to do about it. We thought it could have been an animal that came through in the window. But then if it died there, why is there no smell and where's its body? The box is still in our house and in my room. Caught in a dark trance. We live in an apartment complex with about 4,500 houses. Oh, excuse me. Four to five. Whoa, still hundred. Houses. I'm going to try it again. We live in an apartment complex with about 4,500 houses. Our house is near the school I used to go to. The girl that topped the school last year in academics lives in our apartment. Coincidentally, on a floor right above mine. My mom used to work at the school too. Was a teacher at one point. So whenever we meet in the apartment outside of our house, we say hi or exchange a few words here and there. I usually go down to walk almost every day because I don't leave the house at all otherwise. And it's a way for me to take a nature break for a whole day of studying. I usually go around 5 to 6 p.m. as it's not too dark and the weather's good. Every day I see the girl recycling or maybe walking and listening to music. For the last few days I've been kind of working with meetings here and there, so I keep switching up the time I go to walk by. Sometimes just minutes and sometimes whole hours. Basically, I'd go down any time between 3 p.m. and 9 p.m., and the weird part is every time I'd see her there, too. This isn't the weirdest part, as I thought of it as sort of a coincidence. Today I had to take a longer walk to run some errands in the apartment. It was on the... Excuse me. I'm screwing up all over the place on this one. Sorry, guys. Today I had to take a longer walk to run some errands in the apartment store completely on the other side of the complex. And I saw her there, too. She was stood staring at a wall blankly. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but she had her back toward the road, standing on the sidewalk and staring at a four-foot-tall wall. I walked over to her and see what she was looking at. There was a smaller apartment complex on the other side of the wall, but most houses there have been empty for years, and the ones that people do live in use it as a sort of holiday home. So I didn't assume that she was looking in the house because why would she? There was nothing to look at. I stood behind her before saying anything, trying to look at what she was staring at. But I didn't see anything. Just a translucent window curtain covering an old window in an old empty house. I said to her, what's up? In hopes that she'll tell me what she saw. Yet, she didn't reply. She didn't even turn around to face me. 
I thought she probably didn't hear me, although there was no reason she wouldn't, was dead silent at 8 p.m. I gently tapped her shoulder. She still didn't look at me or even move, for that matter. At this point, other walkers by were just staring at the both of us, frustrated. I walked in front of her and stood directly in her view when she broke contact with the odd house and grabbed her head, seemingly in pain. So I asked her what happened. She told me that she thought she saw someone walk by in the house and thinking nobody lived there came to look. I told her I called at her twice, but she said she didn't remember anything. I don't know what happened, but on her way back she also told me that she got a severe headache. Witches and Curses I need help understanding about witches and curses specifically. I've been trying to write a horror book, and so I've been researching the world of demons extensively, and also reading a lot about exorcisms, as it's something I want to incorporate into my story. Now I'm sure you've heard about Emily Rose. As far as I've read, she was possessed because she was cursed by her aunt. I'm not entirely sure, but I think so. I also watched several videos about famous exorcisms, and one that really stood out was the exorcism of a woman named Rosa. She was said to be possessed because she was cursed by her brother and his girlfriend. Apparently, who was a witch? I've done quite a bit of research, but I still fail to understand how exactly curses can lead to possession. I don't mean to be disrespectful to anybody when I ask this, but how exactly do spirits, excuse me, spirits or entities attach themselves when someone gets cursed? Like, do the malicious spirits just sit there waiting as soon as someone is cursed? They travel over and attach themselves? Again... I mean no disrespect when I ask this, as silly as it sounds. I tried wording it to sound more respectful, but this is the best I could come up with myself. Please help me out and feel free to explain in as much detail as you please. I'll read through it all. I really need all the help I can get on the topic. Ghost in Cemetery in Lebanon, New Hampshire So about maybe two years ago now, I lived in New Hampshire. I work a lot, so I used to go for a walk in the cemetery because it was always quiet and peaceful. Well, I was enjoying the quiet and fall colors on the trees. They were amazing. As I walked, an older man with white hair came walking toward me. I remember thinking that's odd didn't hear a car come up the hill to the cemetery. So I looked back. No car. So I figured he had walked up the hill. As he got closer to me, I noticed he was very well dressed. Blue button-down shirt, khaki pants, and a nice pair of Nike shoes. Was also wearing a Botan Red Sox hat. As we passed by each other, I said hello. He said hello, but never looked at me. I didn't think much about it. Where he passed me was on a gravel trail in the cemetery for cars to drive around the cemetery. He passed me right on a turn on the road, and I had noticed I didn't hear his footsteps on the gravel as he went by. It was less than a minute when I turned around to look at him, but he was gone. There is no way he could have gone anywhere. The cemetery is very open. There's not a lot of trees. I then spend the next 30 minutes looking for him everywhere was so solid-looking, just amazing to witness. Something followed me from the gate to the farm. I grew up on a farm in Max Creek, Missouri. It was literally in the middle of nowhere. My mom and dad always told me about this little old farm called the Arnholtz Farm. It supposedly was haunted. My mom used to be friends with the lady who lived there in high school. And when visiting once, 
She saw a man standing at the top of the stairs, so they called the police. Come to find out, it was the man who shot himself in the house. A quick backstory. One man shot himself in the house, and another hung himself in the barn. Has a really cool family cemetery just down the hill. That's how it was back in these days. So back on track, my dad told me his younger brother David had taken a date for a drive and saw what looked like candlelight in the windows. There had not been anyone living on the farm for years. So one day I decided to go check it out. My grandfather owned the land, so I wouldn't get in trouble. It was in late August. It was a good walk up a dirt road in the middle of nowhere. Maybe 30 minutes. Got to the metal gate and climbed over. This is where things got interesting. As soon as I got over the fence, I felt like something was watching me. Shrugged it off and started down the small path, which was just big enough for a pickup to drive down. As I started to walk, I noticed something was walking in the woods on my right, keeping stride with me, step for step. Figured maybe a deer, maybe wild turkeys. So I kept down the path. But the steps kept the same pace as me and was literally parallel to me in the woods. Started to get creeped out. So I did a test to see what would happen. I would change the pace of my walk from fast to slow, and whatever it would would do the same. So to really test it, I took off at a dead sprint, and so did it, and then it stopped and so did it. So I challenged whatever it was to stop messing around and come out and face me. Nothing. By this time I'd gotten to the clearing where the house was along with the barn. The path had a mild turn to the right into a clearing with the house on the right and the barn to the left. Once I made the clearing, whatever it was that following me, it didn't follow me out of the woods. The house was really starting to fall apart too. Whoever lived there had a thing for roosters because there were paper clippings all over the wall. Couldn't go upstairs because the floors were sagging. Went and checked out the barn. The rope the man had hung himself with was still there and you could see it was frayed from where he had cut him down. Went just down the hill to the left of the barn and paid my respects to the family buried in a small cemetery plot. Spent maybe two hours checking the place out. Starting to get late so I figured I'd better get headed home. Just as soon as I got around the bend into the woods, whatever was in there started up with walking stride for stride for me but on the opposite end of the trail. This went on all the way to the gate, literally followed me to the gate, climbed over the gate as I was walking away. I heard it walk up to the gate and stop. I turned around and nothing. I was only four or five steps away, so I would have seen something. I said have a good day to whatever it was and left. Never went back, but would like to now just see it. in Lebanon, New Hampshire, Helen. In 1999, my first wife had taken a job in Lebanon. It was as the DJ for a county music station. Country. So we moved from Maine to New Hampshire. We rented an apartment in a house out in the country. The house itself was built in 1826. It was an old two-story home. Gecko. We originally had rented the small one bedroom on the side of the house, but when the big apartment came open in 2005, we took it. It was a huge apartment. People who had lived there before us had told us the place was haunted. I was excited about this. I had seen people literally come running out of the house scared. The ghost who we believed to be named Helen was the original owner. Her and her brother had lived there, and they are buried just up the road in a small cemetery. I'd asked them what had happened, and they said the TV and the stereo had turned on by itself. Then the volume on the stereo had been turned all the way up. 
It was this time when we found out that Polly, my wife, had stage four breast cancer. We had a lot of doctor's appointments. It was an early morning day of appointments, and I had my first of many run-ins with Helen. Polly liked all the doors closed for some reason, so I was going around shutting all the doors while she waited for me in the truck. The doors in the apartment had the really old latches where you had to press down on the handle to unlatch the door to open it. It closed the doors to the bedroom and then went and closed the doors to the restroom, so on and so forth as I was doing this. I heard the latch to the bedroom and I heard the door open. At this point, all the hair in my body stood up. Then I heard the latch on the bathroom and the door opened. At this point, I was standing in the kitchen where I had just heard the door closing to the dining room. This door was warped, so to close it, you had to lift the latch and give it a good kick to close it. So I'm standing there, I physically see the latch jiggling, so I say out loud, Come on, let's see you try to open this door, knowing that it had to be kicked pretty hard. The handle jiggled some more. Then the door flew open and hit the wall hard. I was like, holy shit, do that again, that was so cool. Thinking I might have shocked Helen. She was probably trying to scare us out, but I found it to be so cool. As time went on, footsteps were heard. She would whisper my name right next to me. The bed would sort of shake as I was trying to sleep. It was like somebody walking up to your bed and then shoving it really hard two or three times. The basement was so creepy, too. I never went down there. Polly passed in January of 2008. So I was in the apartment alone now. People would stay with me from time to time to make sure I'd be okay. One of my friends named Marla was staying there. She was a smoker. I had gone to bed at this point, and when I woke up, she was nowhere to be found. She had left me a note on the kitchen table which read, I went outside at 2 a.m. and was sitting up on the steps when a woman in a nightgown came up the driveway and then turned and came up the stairs and passed me before going into your apartment. Helen had freaked her out. Helen liked to mess with people just to let them know that she was around. Helen was very active, but I didn't mind. When I finally moved out because the place had too many memories of Polly, I said goodbye to Helen, thanked her for watching over me. I also placed a rose on her grave. Crazy Night Alone on the Beach in Maine, Sandy Point. So here's what happened to me while in college. This was 1991. Was in college at University of Maine for sports medicine. While I lived a solid hour from the college in a small creepy town named Sandy Point, which is just on the other side of Bucksport, Maine. When I say creepy, I mean creepy. First of all, the house I lived in was crazy haunted, but that's a tale for another time. Because of my busy schedule, I used to get home really late, and to relax, I would walk down to the waterfront to enjoy the quiet. One night I had gotten home at 11 p.m. The moon was full, so I took the short walk down to the little beach. So I got down to the beach and took a seat on a piece of driftwood. I was listening to the waves wash up. That's when I noticed what sounded like somebody walking towards me. Needless to say, my senses immediately went on high alert. I'm thinking who in the hell would be down here at this hour? With the moon kind of being totally full, the beach was basically lit up, and I could see in both directions completely. As I was looking, the steps continued toward me. The beach was a mixture of sand and gravel, so the sounds were loud. By this time, I was on my feet looking for anyone. Saw nothing. Thought maybe I was overtired and went home, but was still just wondering about what it was that made me go back the next night. It was around midnight. The moon was bright, and I could see the beach perfectly yet again. I sit down on the driftwood just sit there listening. Then I heard it, 
sounded like somebody walking out on the water into the beach. It was to my left, so I was looking in that direction. Steps came toward me at the regular pace. I called out hello, started walking in its direction. Kept hearing the walking, so I kept going in that direction and not seeing anyone. The moonlight was making the beach easy to see. I stopped and then the steps stopped, and all I could hear was the waves. This went on basically every night for a week. It was really frustrating me, wondering what was going on. So, I finally got down to doing research on Sandy Point. After a bit of time, I hit pay dirt. Come to find out that in the 1940s, a gypsy woman had been murdered on the beach after it had been taken there by a man during the Bangor State Fair. He raped and killed her on the beach there. The police found her in the water. After finding all this out, I had to pay my respects the best way I could. The next full moon night, I had went back down to the beach and sat down and said out loud, I know what happened to you, and it was terrible, and should have never happened. I hope you find peace. After saying this, I heard the footsteps literally coming out of the water. Without a doubt, footsteps coming toward me. I just stayed seated, heard the steps come right up next to me. Didn't look to my left, just kept looking forward. Said, I'm sorry for what happened to you. Then stood up and looked. Was no one there, and no steps walking away, just felt like somebody was there. I said good night, and I went home. It was a bit before I went back. Before I moved to Bangor to be closer to school, I paid one more visit to the beach. It was really, really late at night. I said out loud, May you be at peace. I left her some roses. She didn't deserve that, and died way too young. I never went back. I hope she's finally able to rest. More Craziness in Stockton Springs, Maine This happened while living there. As you already know, I liked walking around the area at night after getting home from college. This happened on the road to the Hershey House. Hersey? Hersey House. Forgive me. So let me give you the lay of the land. So from the main road, you turn right to the street I lived on then immediately right into the driveway of where I lived. Go down the hill over the railroad tracks, and if you go straight, you end up on the beach. This is the beach I talked about before. But if you turn right, you are in the road to the Hershey house. The road to the house was unusually long, with woods right on the road. And then after a good walk, you come into a clearing with the house setting out over a ledge, looking out over the bay. So one night when I got home super late and had finished what homework I had to do, I decided to go for a walk. It was around 2.30 a.m. I usually don't bring anything with me, but a gut feeling told me I should. So I grabbed a cane my dad had. It was very solid wood. Went out the front door down the hill, took the right turn onto the road to the Hersey house. I don't know if it's Hershey or Hersey. They're writing it both ways, all over the place. It was an amazing moonlight night, and the moon was lighting up the road nicely. I was enjoying the sounds of the night crickets and other sounds. Got into the super dark part of the road, and that's when the sounds stopped. Thinking at this time something's not right. I just kept walking. By this time my eyes had adjusted to the extreme dark on the road. Right in front of me was a very large, dark shape, and it was definitely looking at me. I could feel its eyes on me. It let out this enormous scream, which, let's be honest, scared the crap out of me. Being scared, I let out a very loud scream back, raised the cane over my head like a sword. Must have surprised it. We then just stood there looking at each other. Then it stood up and took a couple of steps toward me. I yelled as loud as I could again. I've never seen something move away as fast as it did. 
was there, then it wasn't. Didn't hear any kind of steps on the ground. For something that big to make no sound, moving as fast as it did made no sense. I should have heard something. Needless to say, I took off fast in the other direction. Got home and I was thinking, what the fuck was that? Went down the next morning and looked around for anything. No tree branches broken. No footprints in the mud on the side of the road. There was absolutely nothing there. It was absolutely massive. I'm not sure what to think, even to this day. Paranormal or not. If it was a bear or a moose, I would have heard it take off either up the road or through the woods. Which would have been load. Walked the road many times again at night trying to see if it would happen. Yes, Gecko, I agree, it was funny. Nothing really ever happened again. Moved back to Bangor and never got to find out. What do you all think it might have been? Ghost at Gettysburg Battlefield Little Round Top Years ago, I used to do Civil War reenacting. I fought at all the major battlefields. There were times when we were marching into battle that we would see someone go running by and then disappear. This was the 135 Gettysburg reenactment in the mid-1990s. It was on the second day of the reenactment, just after fighting the Battle of Little Round Top. My wife, who had tragically passed in 2008 to breast cancer, we decided to go to the actual battlefield. Seeing that I'm really into the paranormal, we both went still dressed in period clothing. I had both uniforms, North and South, and was a proud member of the 20th Maine Company B and the 4th Texas. I was in my Confederate gray uniform. She was in full hoop skirt and with the dress and gloves. Battlefield itself is sacred ground. We visit all the places on the field. Devil's Den, the Triangle Field Pickett's Charge, and of course, Little Round Top. It was at Little Round Top that I decided to see if I could get any kind of paranormal reaction. In full Confederate uniforms, I walked straight into where the 20th Maine was placed during the battle, which was at the very end of the Union line. Said the South should have won, then started singing Dixie started to hear what sounded like steps coming towards me. It smelled like a very distinct smell of sulfur, which smelled like rotten eggs. That is the smell from gunpowder used during the battles. Kept up what I was doing, and the smell got really bad, and the feel of the area seemed to get hostile. Kept going with what I was doing. My wife was like, I think we need to leave. It was at this time that I physically felt somebody come right up to me from the back. It was the feeling of someone very pissed off. I turned around to face whoever it was, and I knew it would be a spirit of a soldier. It was right up in my face, and I was cold from being near it. I was freezing, and this was in Pennsylvania in August, and I was in full wool uniform. It was at this point I got shoved hard. I've always been strong and I power lift for a sport, so it takes a lot to move me. But this sent me backwards a few steps. I got up and stepped back toward it, not knowing if it was really still there. Said I was sorry for what I did and that I was only trying to see if, you know, we could make an appearance. Stepped forward a couple of more steps and nothing. Still felt like we were being watched by a lot of eyes. Said out loud sorry, I meant no disrespect. And I said I'm sorry for how they died and thanked them for their sacrifice and how they saved the Union because of their actions. Both Polly and myself walked back down the hill to our truck and got in. Felt like we were getting followed all the way down the hill. We then left the battlefield, went back to the reenactment camp and settled in. The next day during the third days of the Battle of Pickett's Charge and after the amazing cannon battle, I went over the wall behind Armstead got shot fighting over the cannons. After I fell, I got some really good battle picks. I would highly recommend visiting Gettysburg.
Ghost Child at Work in New Hampshire, Late at Night So this happened maybe two years ago. I was working as the night manager at a local grocery store. It had been one crazy day of business. It was probably around 10 p.m. and the store was finally slowing down. So I had to go to the restroom. Let me give you the layout of the store. When you come into the store, you come into the front entrance. Then turn to the left and walk into the store. The produce department is the first one you see. And if you go to the right, you'll go down the hallway to the break room. And then to the restrooms. So I walk into the far stall in the restroom and I do my business. I then heard a voice of a child say hello. I wasn't really paying attention, thinking he was talking to somebody else. Then he said hello one more time. This time I figured out he was talking to me. So, I came out of the stall. He was dressed up really nice. He was maybe five to seven years old. He was very well dressed. He had on blue jeans, a dress shirt, and a tie and a blue vest. Hair was well groomed. He said hello again. I said hello back. I was thinking to myself how I found it odd that I didn't hear the door open or shut. The door to the men's room shut hard and always slammed shut. He then asked me how to turn the water on in the sink. I showed him that all you had to do was put your hands over the nozzle and it turned on automatically. Asked him if he had a parent waiting and he said his mom was waiting for him. I said, okay, be safe. Put a stepping stool up for him so he could use the sink. So I went back to work. I then literally passed one of my workers outside the restroom. He said he'd be out shortly. I got back to work. A few minutes later, he joined me. I asked him if he saw the little boy washing his hands, and he said, What little boy? I thought he was joking, so I told him about the little boy. He said there was no little boy in there. So I went looking for the little boy. First went back into the restroom, but figured, well, I guess I just figured he wouldn't be in there then went looking for him in the store. I had two people working in the front of the produce department just outside the hallway. I asked them if they saw the boy, and they both said no. The boy would have to walk right by them, so I walked the entire store looking for him and his mom. Saw no one. I asked everybody who was working, and no one saw them. Then went to loss prevention. Had him go over to the footage in the store, Saw me go into the restroom, but saw no little boy or mother. Then saw me come out, and then my workers come out. We looked at all the footage on all the cameras, and the little boy and his mom were never seen. To this day, I hope him and his mom have found peace, and have moved on. Good or bad ghost, spirit slash entity. A lot going on lately. Check it out. So the woman I've been seeing for a few months now has her own house. And I've been staying occasionally with her on the weekends. We stay up late on weekends. One night when we were up late, we saw a bottle pop up from the counter. Went down to the floor. Didn't roll over and just fall, but literally pop up then hit the floor. One night we were laying down to go to sleep. We heard her daughter's xylophone being played with very little. The same night the restroom door closed on its own, like slammed shut. And once we were in the bedroom we heard noise coming from the restroom that sounded like somebody rubbing their fingernails along the shower curtain. Then we opened the door, and you guessed it, nothing was there. She had weird dreams and she said that she's heard whispers in her ears. Even one night when I was there, she heard somebody tell her to get out. But we kind of think that whatever it is, it's more good than bad. Two weeks ago, I slept in the living room because sometimes I snore loud. I woke up around 3.30 a.m., had the TV on, and I heard a creak of like somebody setting their foot on the wood floor. Then I heard three quick footsteps as if somebody like a kid was running in the house. By the sound and depth of the steps, it sounded like a kid, maybe 6 to 12. Very scary. Then this weekend, she heard the baby crying, very scared from the baby's room. So she went and got her and put her in the bed between us. 
I was asleep, so she tried to wake me, but would have woke up the baby again if she was too loud. But she said that she heard what sounded like the baby crying loudly from the baby's room. But at that point, the baby was in the bed sleeping with us. So she got up, moved to the edge of the bed so she could still hear it. Any ideas on if it may be good or bad? I've been followed by a mimic ghost for four years. I'm a 20-year-old female who had seen a lot of paranormal stuff throughout my life. But I currently have one spirit that follows me. I really don't know how to start this off, but I'll start with where I think the spirit has followed me from. I live in Australia, and there are a lot of areas that I've been to that have way too much spiritual energy, or even curses. But this one place I lived for a while on the other side of Melbourne didn't seem to have much spiritual energy. Me and my stepsister at the time were out walking. Everything just kind of got heavy and tense, which made us start walking faster before running into the gate of our home at the time. I'd learned this thing where if you tell a spirit you don't give them permission to enter an area, it'll keep them away, so I did that. I could always feel it standing at the gate, watching the house at night. About a year had passed at that point, and I had moved in with my grandparents to do a course, but would visit my mom, at least when I had the chance. She'd moved to a new house a few doors down from the old one, and there was one night I stayed over for a family thing, or maybe my birthday. I don't really remember. But I decided to go to bed to watch some videos. Since the house was newly bought, there wasn't any curtains, so my room faced directly into the front of the property. I started hearing my stepsister yelling my name from the front of the property for some reason, even though they were all near the pool in the backyard. I ignored it for a while, but after the fourth time of hearing her shout my name, I went to the back where they all were, asked if anybody was calling my name. My stepsister was sitting with them all, and nobody had called me. It had been a year or so since that had happened before having anything else happen again. I used to work at a very haunted pub, so I'd seen a lot of weird stuff. But one night when I was walking out to take the trash to the bins, I started hearing my friend. This is a friend that I worked with. They shouted my name again. It's pretty dark aside from the lights of the pub windows, and I look around for her. I could hear her singing at the same time of her shouting my name. Everything felt really tense again, so I ran back inside and asked where my friend was. She'd been in the cool room the whole time, so I asked her if she was shouting my name. She said no, but she was singing, which completely spooked me. The most recent thing was a few days ago when I heard my stepmom talking to the door. I thought she'd come home after a biker thing she went to, so I went to the door and no one was there. This thing has been following me, and despite only doing this every year to a few months, I'm getting concerned. I know this thing isn't friendly. As I'm writing this, I'm hearing something dragging outside my window and tapping against the wall outside. I've moved about four times, on opposite ends of my state, too, and it has continued to follow me. I don't know if this is a stupid thing to ask, but I'd really love help in any way to try to get rid of it. Sage doesn't do anything. And telling it to leave me alone doesn't help either. I have my protection hanging above my bed, but I'm honestly scared. This is what happens when you drive down a haunted road. When I was 18, I was really into scary movies. I just had an urge to see or experience something scary. It was during the summer that I started researching haunted sites I could visit. Then one caught my attention. Sweet Hollow Road in Long Island. There are a bunch of popular urban legends linked to the site, and all of them have to do with the creepy underpass bridge. A few of the stories speak about the violent deaths of children. 
One day I told my cousin and brother, who were also ghost story fanatics, that we should visit Sweet Hollows. My cousin had just gotten his license. My mom insisted on tagging along. When we finally got to the underpass, we found nothing. We didn't see anything out of the ordinary. The only scary thing we experienced at that site was due to the thin zigzag-like road we almost crashed into a tree. We thought the trip was a waste. But then something strange happened. The next morning my mom swore that during the night she felt like someone or something was watching her from under her bed. On the other hand, the rest of us had dreamt of a small boy with black hair. He was pale and none of us could remember his face. Until this day, we still believed that whoever we saw had to be one of the many children who had died at that bridge. Not sure if I totally believe in the paranormal, but my family does have one unexplained experience. This is an encounter several years in the past. Although it is a personal encounter, it's shared between my entire family, who can all attest and recall the experience. It's an ingrained family event. We were just moving into our new house development in rural Wisconsin. My mother and father were working on some items in the house, and my brother and I, ages 10 and 7, had to stay behind baby gates in the only finished room in the house. There were sort of multi-story unfinished balconies on the site, so we had to be there. It was around 8 p.m. at night in the summer. Mom and Dad were bringing in some groceries to start making a late dinner. My brother and I were playing with our Hot Wheels playset. All of a sudden, my brother and I hear a distinct, Hello? Who's there? Which seemed to be coming from the floor below us. My brother confirms my suspicions that the voice does not belong to Mom or Dad. My brother asks me to confirm and say something back, so I answered back. Dad? The voice answers again. Hello? From what I can recall, it was like a confused type of hello. Of course, my brother and I start screaming our lungs out for mom and dad. There wasn't supposed to be anybody around. Neighbors are at least a half mile from us. Mom and dad come running up the stairs soon and immediately start just hugging us and asking us what the matter is. We told them we heard a voice, and somebody was in the house. Dad immediately does a search of the house and finds no trace of anybody being there. To this day, my family can all recall this event. My brother attests to hearing voices, and my parents attest to rushing into screaming children. They didn't hear any voices, however. This is my only encounter I've ever had. Not super scary by any means, but it is an unexplainable encounter. No other strange events have happened in the house. My Childhood Paranormal Story Neighbor's friend didn't want anyone near her. So this might be a bit of a long that happened to me. When I was six or seven, living in Massachusetts, Back then, my family and I lived in, in a basement under this family and their two kids. Like I said, I was around six or seven at this time, and this family had a daughter that was probably four or five, and another that was maybe ten. Now, the five-year-old was a strange little girl from the very moment you first met her. Let's call her Amy. Amy was quiet and wide-eyed, would just kind of stare through you every time you talked to her, she would not like to have company from anyone, not even from her mother. One day my mom came to me asking to kind of play more with Amy. She was so alone and had no friends and all that. Since I didn't know anything at the time, I was just like whatever and went upstairs to play with her. Once I got there, I was just kind of hanging out with her in the living room watching cartoons while she just sat there. Her sister then comes into the room and asks me if I really came to play with Amy. I say that yes, I did, but she didn't really give me attention, so I was just going to watch TV. Her sister then turns to me and says something like, Good, don't interact with her too much. She's not right. 
didn't really think much of it at the time, and the day kind of ended with nothing more happening. A couple of days later, I go up to play with Amy again. My mom told me to. And after a few minutes there, Amy turns to me and says, You need to leave. She doesn't like it when I play with you. While constantly shifting her eyes from me to the windows, I don't remember exactly what happened because it was years ago, but I remember feeling super queasy at the time and very uncomfortable. So I went back home and told my mom what happened. My mom was a very Christian woman, and so was Amy's mom. When I told her this, she immediately got very worried and told me not to go back there. Apparently, Amy's mom had already told my mom that Amy always mentioned a friend that would tell her to do things and what to say, like an imaginary friend. I didn't really have much more contact with Amy alone after this, but I did learn what comes next as an adult talking to my mom about it. After Amy said I couldn't play with her anymore, my mom and her mom went to talk to Amy to understand what was wrong and why she didn't want to play with me. That's when Amy first described her friend in detail. Apparently, she said her friend would yell at her, make her do bad things if she didn't obey her. She described her friend as a young girl just a bit older than her, with dirt on her face and under her nails, wearing a dirty old white dress. Her friend also had very bad teeth, according to Amy. She was telling this, my mom says. Amy started crying and screaming while staring at the window. Get out of here. I'm not going to follow you. Mom, make her stop. She wants me to make her follow her out the window. Please get me out of here. Our mothers immediately took her out of the house. We all went to stay at the church. Amy said the girl would come crawling on the ceiling and up the walls at night to her room. Tell her to do so many bad things like swear at her sister, beat her parents, not brush her teeth. She didn't and had cavities all over her teeth. And even things like grab a knife or jump out the window. A few days later, they all went into Amy's room. My mom, her mom, Amy, and a pastor from our church to try, I don't know, exercise whatever was there. My mom says at first Amy was crying while this happened and begging them to stop. Then she started laughing and laughing saying they were weak and sinners and things like that. Eventually, Amy just kind of passed out sleeping. I'm not sure what happened next. We moved out of the house, and I never saw Amy again. What I do now know is that my mom says the pastor went to her house several more times, and Amy also went to a psychologist and a psychiatrist. I didn't see most of this happening, other than her telling me not to play with her and the super weird vibes from being near her. I remember very vividly that, well, whenever she got into the room, you could feel the mood change and get heavier, even to a seven-year-old. Anyway, so that's my story. I have no pictures or anything like that, but I still get goosebumps just thinking about Amy. She was a very, very, very creepy little girl. Two Encounters, One Ghost Asterix, Wink, Asterix In the early 90s, every Wednesday we would take my grandma out to eat. She had two favorite places, Hometown Buffet and this Chinese restaurant that was attached to a Sam's Club type of a superstore, forget the name. The Chinese spot was attached to the front of the store and overlooked the entire parking lot. One Wednesday night, we were at the Chinese restaurant. We were sitting in a booth by the window. I was sitting closest to the window across from my dad. My parents were talking to my grandma about who knows what. I was picking at my food, staring at the nearly empty parking lot. That is when I noticed a man walking at the front sidewalk of the restaurant. He was wearing what seemed to be a light blue business suit, a fedora, and was holding a briefcase was staring at him, but not intently, as I was thinking about something else. It wasn't until he was about 20 feet from us that I noticed something odd. He had stopped to look at his wristwatch, and I realized that I could see the cars in the parking lot through his body. 
My first instinct at ten years old was to find a logical explanation. He must be inside the restaurant. I'm seeing his reflection, thus allowing me to see the cars through his body. So I look to my left. He's not there. I look to my right. There he is. That is when I realized I was possibly looking at an apparition. I was so excited that I was trying to get my dad's attention to point it out. But I wasn't yelling. I was just barely eking out the word dad. Hadn't even realized it. As this is happening, I point at the apparition. He looks up at me, begins to continue walking towards, but past us, and eventually fades into nothing. I was so stunned and excited, I pinched myself because I thought I was dreaming. Fast forward to 2002. I'm 21 years old, hanging out with my cousins and some friends. I don't remember even how we got on the subject of ghosts, but I tell this story. One of my friends, James, turns ghost white, pun intended, wide-eyed, and he says to me, Tell me you're just fucking with me. Confused, I say, what do you mean? He then tells me that when he was a kid, his parents were leaving the same parking lot one night. He was sitting in the back of the car. His dad was reversing out of a parking spot. Just then, his mom from the passenger seat begins to freak out. She's yelling at his dad to slam on the brakes because there's a man walking behind the car. His dad looks at her like she's crazy and says, I was looking behind my shoulder the whole time. There's nobody over there. And I would have felt it if we hit someone. His mom described the man as wearing a three-piece suit, a fedora, and was holding a briefcase. Is this a ghost or spirit or something else? Everyone in our house knows about the spirit and entity thing. It used to hole up in my sibling's closet and scare her at night by opening the door and watch them from the edge of their bed that was placed in the front of the door. They moved their bed and blocked off their closet with their dresser so they no longer experience it. My two brothers know it exists because it would mimic my parents' voices and call them to the bottom of the stairs. I even fell for it a few times. It mostly mimicked my mom's voice. She's moved out and dad had the house, so it stopped mimicking both their voices. It'd mainly go after me and my siblings. My sibling, mostly. We even cleaned the house and this thing is still here. My sibling got cleansed as well about three times. It used to touch me and my sister and follow us around and watch us shower and sleep, whatever we did. It mainly shows itself at night as this giant looming figure that doesn't have a shape to describe it. Dad just told us to ignore it and not to feed into its scares or anything like that. For the last few months it's been stomping around in our attic and knocking stuff over and moving stuff that we need. We just ignore it, but lately it's been going after me. The past week I've experienced it getting into my bed while I'm trying to sleep. The thing chasing me up the stairs, day or night, it's been wiping the water built off the glass right where I shower at my face level and down and knocking at my bedroom door. It showed itself once since it started. And my feelings also have been all over the place for the past week as well. Is this thing a ghost, a spirit, whatever, or something else? Why didn't it go when we cleansed the house? And why has this thing been after me and being a complete creep? I'm tired of it, and I want to know what it is. I have no photos because it's rare to see it, and even then it's like a blink and then you miss it. Also, me and my sibling are both feminine, and my mom also experienced stuff from the ghost as well, but she never told me really what she experienced other than being watched at night. I'm a boy and my sibling is not binary. My other two siblings are both boys like me. Yes, Gecko. See ya.
Greetings, believers and skeptics alike. You've stumbled upon Paranormal M, where we explore the unexplained with an open mind. Hit subscribe, turn on notifications, and most importantly, hit the little thumbs up button and join us on this journey of discovery. Wife brought ghost home. Maybe. I'll preface this by saying that my wife is a scientist and a staunch skeptic. She teaches biology, anatomy, and anthropology at UCSD, and often works with real human remains in her teachings. She was lecturing on human development and disassembled a child's skull to show the plates and how they fuse, etc. However, she didn't reassemble them before coming home. Late that night, I don't know, maybe 2 a.m., I go to the bathroom, do my thing. And when I get back in bed, she stirs and says something like, Wait, were you just in the bathroom? And I'm like, yeah, why? Confused. She shrugs it off. I thought we were cuddling. The next day, she explains that she felt me, but not me, holding her from behind. But the more she thought about it, it was smaller, like childlike. She ends up explaining it away as a dream, and we just kind of let it go. A few nights later, she goes to bed early, leaving me in our living room. A few minutes later, I hear a scream, and she runs downstairs looking truly terrified. She claims to have seen a shadowy figure next to the nightstand on my side of the bed. She described it as the size of a child and staticky, like when a TV doesn't have a signal. It looked like it was rummaging through my nightstand. And when she entered the room, it got spooked, quickly disappeared into our closet. Once she was calm, she again tried to rationalize it. Oh, it was the wind. No windows were open. Or it was just a weird shadow from the lights coming on. In the shape of a child? She maintains her skepticism, but does claim there is a lonely energy, again childlike, like a little kid searching for their mom. The weirdest part of this is that the next class day she reassembled the skull, and nothing happened again. What are your thoughts? I'm pretty convinced, but she continues to deny it and rationalize it away. My Experience with Demonic Possession My earliest memory with this thing was when I was a kid. I was in bed and something woke me up. It felt wrong and terrible, so I hid underneath my covers like a kid would. And I felt this thing creep up my bunk bed up the ladder and literally just stare at me. I could feel its presence right outside of my blanket. I fell back asleep somehow, desperately wishing it would leave. It would then give me nightmares. For years, as they'd always be the same. I'd be in bed, like I was awake. But I'd be paralyzed and just see it hovering above me. It would always have this shit-eating grin, like it was enjoying what it was doing. It came in many shapes, but the two eye holes and smile will always be burned into my memory. Sometimes in the dreams I'd be able to move, but my body would weigh a ton and I wouldn't be able to get out of bed. I would cry for help to find my voice and it just didn't work. I'd literally crawl out of bed sometimes and turn on the light to find it didn't work. Sometimes I'd crawl and make it all the way to my brother's room or my parents, but they'd never be able to help me. All the while that thing was there and just eating it up. The thing is, it's always felt so realistic. Like, I don't know, I was dreaming until I would wake up. It was horrifying. Sometimes it bled into actual waking paralysis. And I would know for sure I was awake. But I would be actually paralyzed. 
I would see it lurking around my room, crawling on the ceiling or just hovering right above me, smiling like it loved to do. Eventually, I learned how to fight back. Instead of getting scared in those dreams, I would get angry and swing at the thing if I could. It changed its tactics and started giving me different nightmares. But when my dream self started to notice it getting dark, I'd jolt myself into lucidity and banish whatever form it took and change my dreams. So it came for me in my waking life. It would whisper awful things to me, make me distrust people and hate myself. I had no idea it was the thing, and it was putting the thoughts into my own head. It sounded like my own voice. It would make me rape myself, make me hurt myself. It drove me to attempting suicide in high school, it made me do awful, destructive things. I lost a lot of friends. I'm still traumatized, and I have a sort of shaky relationship with people in general. As I moved out of high school, I got into spirituality. I did a lot of research about energy and entities, and finally put the pieces together. I was possessed. It was a demon. Probably a low-level one, but a demon all the same. At my lowest point after the suicide, it showed itself to me in person. I had just been kicked out and I was living in a total dump of a place. I really hated myself and I was getting drunk and throwing things and channeling a lot of anger. And I guess it was enough for it to manifest because I heard a deep rumbling, almost like a growl and I could feel something coming from the other side. Then a shadow appeared complete with horns, a tail, and glowing red eyes. I felt a powerful fear just by looking at it, as if it radiated fear and negativity. It didn't say anything, and I willed it to leave, and it did, or made itself, well, invisible again. I eventually started to realize that it was feeding on my negativity. It all started with the nightmares, that mindless fear in its smile. I was food for it, or it knew how to play me to make food. So I starved it. I aggressively changed my life. I was already in spirituality, but I devoted my life to it and uplifting myself and clearing my energy. I found God, made his presence the one at my shoulder, his voice the only one that I heard. I even started casting spells and cast a powerful banishing spell. I beat it with a passion. As the paper etched with all of its foul deeds burned away, I actually felt the oppression I had known all my life start to fade. I felt confident in the fact that it was gone and confident that I could shape my life. Just like I had shaped my dreams. I hadn't had any nightmares since then. No physical incursions. I still have some negative thoughts, because, well, who doesn't? But they aren't nearly as frequent or as loud as they used to be. But maybe it's still there. Maybe it's just silently biding its time, waiting for me to slip up so it can sink its teeth in one more time. Ask Reddit. First one. One Halloween night, I was driving home from a gig in a sparsely populated area. Not the woods, but pretty close. I come around a corner and a woman in a sexy nurse costume comes out of nowhere. Literally seemed to burst from a bunch of bushes on the side of the road. I hit the brakes. She does that disjointed kind of walk akin to Silent Hill nurses across the street. I never saw her face. Her hair was all crazy and covered. Also, her clothes seemed, I guess, askew would be the most appropriate description. This lasted maybe ten seconds. I thought she would let me in on the gag when she reached the other side of the road. Nope. 
She just jolted her way into a wooded area. I was freaked out and thought about driving away, but something gave me pause beside the obvious. There was just something not quite right. So I pulled over and yelled out if she needed help. No response. I called for another couple of minutes and kind of walked the area where she went. No trace. So I drove off. No other houses looked like they had lights on. Everything looked shut down. I was shook. Two days later, I read an article in the paper. It described how they found a woman's body matching the description of what I saw dead under a tree in the woods. I even called the police department, filed a report as being the last person to see her alive. Alive, in quotes. There were some sketchy details with the domestic partner, but no one really knows what happened to her. Second. Like I said before, I tour all over the country for music. Me and my wife played a gig in Lafayette. But we had to drive back to North L.A. after, in the middle of the night for business-related reasons. We hit the road after midnight, but before 1 a.m. No one out on the roads. Super dark out. We took 10 back to North... Or, excuse me. North L.A. If you've ever been on this road, you know that a good portion of it is like a giant bridge over swampy weird lakes 20 to 30 feet off the water. So a couple of hours after leaving, we were driving and chatting about stuff, talking about the gig, about the next day's events, etc. I casually flicked the high beams on and we both went silent. Me. Did you see that? Wife. Yeah. Me. What do we do? Wife. Keep driving faster. When I flicked the high beams, we both saw a person climbing over the edge of the barrier on the side of the road. I think a spirit pretended to be my cousin. My only paranormal experience happened around 2007 to 2009. I would have been around eight, maybe nine years old. These experiences happened at my cousin's house at the time. To keep their identity anonymous, I'll call them Jem and Ellie. Jem is two years younger and Ellie is the same age as me. For context, I would often go over to their house for play dates and sleepovers. My uncle was usually never home because he was constantly working. My aunt was usually in the kitchen or caring for my no newborn cousin. They don't live there anymore and moved out about six years ago. I'm sharing this now as an adult after reflecting on my experiences with my cousins. I will also be sharing some of their experiences as well. Also, when I say there, I'm referring to Jem and Ellie. I can confidently say that every time I went over to their house, I felt a weird sensation of anxiety. It was an unspoken rule between my cousins and I that we move around the house in pairs. The house felt heavy and like somebody was always watching us. Their house had three floors. The upstairs consisted of the three bedrooms. The main level consisted of the front porch, the living room, the dining room, the kitchen, and the back porch and the basement, which consisted of an open layout as a laundry room. The only space that felt safe was the front porch and living room. That's where we would often play. Now this pair system would only be done at their house. The times where I would have to go around the house by myself, it felt like somebody was behind me or following me. I remember always rushing around and I hated going to the bathroom. The bathroom on the main floor was underneath the stairs. It was very small and kind of like a Harry Potter closet, but slightly bigger. Gave me major creeps. The first event that made me feel eerie about their home happened during a sleepover. It was the next morning and we were all eating breakfast in the kitchen. This Saturday my uncle was not working. I remember feeling excited because that meant my cousins and I would be doing something fun. 
My aunt didn't drive, so we were often just staying at their house. Anyways, it was a normal morning and we were all eating. When we heard the loudest bang upstairs, I remembered shook the ceiling above us. We just all stopped eating and stared at each other. I was so scared because I knew, well, no one was up there except my baby cousin. And he was only months old. My uncle immediately went up to make sure he was okay. Luckily, he came back and said he was sound asleep. He also said everything upstairs looked fine. Nothing fell and everything looked exactly like it did earlier. We still didn't know what it was. Now the experience that validated my constant feeling that there might be spirits happened during a family party. It was my uncle's birthday. Sometime in August or September. It was a relatively big party with maybe 50 plus people. They had a big backyard. All the adults were outside under those white party tents, you know? Most of the kids were huddled up on the couch in the living room watching movies because it was raining that day. The living room was next to the stairs going upstairs. I was sitting facing the stairs and remembered Jem leaving because she wanted to play in the rain with some other kids. Some time passed and Jem came back inside. She announced that she was going upstairs for socks because hers were wet. I saw her go up and back down to go back outside. Some more time passed and my aunt, her mom, came inside asking where Jem was. Ellie responded saying that she was upstairs. I didn't think anything of it because I was focused on the movie and honestly didn't care to correct her. So my aunt called Jem from the bottom of the stairs. Well, actually, she screamed her name, and we, as in all the kids in the living room, heard Jem's voice respond in Spanish. It took me a couple of seconds to realize, wait, I saw Jem go outside. That's when I told my aunt. So she went upstairs and just came down laughing nervously. She was like, she's not there. My aunt told Ellie just to go get Jem from outside. Maybe two minutes later, Ellie came back in with Jem and my aunt started questioning Jem where she was. Jem came back hella annoyed because her big sis interrupted her fun. Thinking back at it now, I feel like my aunt stayed there in the living room with us to validate what she had just experienced. I remember her asking us, You all heard Jem, right? While Ellie went outside to get Jem, she was stunned, to say the least. The rest of us were too. Jem and Ellie have a lot more scary experiences at their old house than I do, but I'll just share one. This specific experience they had was a big deal. I remember right after it happened, a priest went to bless their house. It was a whole weekend ordeal. Family and friends visited their home to pray for hours. At the time, my cousins didn't tell me what happened because it was so traumatic for them. I heard it from my grandma, who's telling my mom. I'm telling the story now that my cousins told it to me as adults. At the time, they both had their own rooms, but never slept alone. They always slept in Jem's room together. They both were scared of being in Ellie's room because they experienced something touching their hair once. Sharing a room was never an issue because of how scared they were at night. They shared with me that they always had that eerie feeling like somebody was watching them at night. It often was difficult for them to fall asleep easily because of the paranormal activity they would experience. This specific night, their mom had just tucked them into bed. As they were trying to sleep, they both heard a woman's voice humming between them. They say they remember the voice right next to their ear. Immediately, they both got up and ran off crying to their parents' bedroom. After this moment, they could only sleep in their parents' bedroom. My uncle had to buy a king-size bed because they refused to sleep in their room. And after maybe a year, they began to sleep again in their room. The blessing of the house seemed to help settle everyone's nerves. My theory is that whatever this spirit was, it didn't like men. 
I was at their house a lot, and the only times I would experience things was when my uncle was present. My aunt has shared with me as well, well that her most scary experiences are when there were men at the house. Obviously, as kids, we can't really contextualize this and are fearful of this feeling that we can't explain. Looking back now, my cousins and I agree that this spirit didn't have malicious intent towards us. What type of entity is he? I will not go into too much detail since the entity watches me, knows my thoughts, and is around me almost all the time. I don't think this man is evil or anything like that, but very possessive. I don't need help to know if he's real or not. I've already figured out he is after dealing with him since I was five. I just want to know if there's a way to figure out how powerful a being he can be. Has anyone dealt with something like this, and did you know if they were dangerous or could do a lot of damage? I don't think he wants to hurt me, so I'm not worried about that. But I also have a knowledge that even when my body dies, I won't be able to leave him. He gets mad when I think of him as a demon, or a god or an angel, like a negative pressure in my head. But if I think of him as a soulmate, then he's happy. A relaxing, tingling chill runs down my body. He doesn't say things directly. I have to use the pressure and tingles method to figure it out. Even typing this much information is making me feel ill. This whole thing's kind of embarrassing to admit. Haven't told a single person in my life about this. I thought this was in my head, but it's not. Does anybody have experience with something like this? If there's different levels of entities or beings, or... Is it just another soul? like the same ones humans have. Could he actually be my soulmate from my past life? Or he just didn't incarnate with me in this life? I'm a 32-year-old female and a virgin. I've wanted to be in a relationship and I've had a good chunk of men throughout the years show interest in me. I'm not super attractive, but average looking. But it's never really gone anywhere. Like every event in my life was designed to keep me isolated. I'm allowed to fantasize about fictional men who look like him, but that is the farthest I'm allowed to go. Can an entity do that? Can a human soul do that? That story was interesting. What do you guys think? Ghost encounter that happened to me and my boyfriend. I always believed in ghosts and that they could be real. Felt like most likely they are, like I believe people when they told me things. But it's really hard to wrap your head around. Also kind of scary, so you kind of try to deny it. But you can't, and you don't know what to believe. But I can't deny now after witnessing it. My two encounters were both a year ago. Maybe a year and a half. My boyfriend was there both times with me. So number one, the scariest one. We got off work and he was living with his cousin that had two young daughters. So we get there and knocking to get let in. We were calling because we were locked out. So maybe a few minutes later we hear his daughter inside saying, Mommy, Daddy, wake up, somebody's here knocking on the door. Definitely her voice. And so we're fully thinking they're home now because she wouldn't be left alone without a parent. So after a while, we're still outside and his cousin gets home. His daughters jump out of the car. So I'm looking at him like, what just happened? We were both freaked out. He doesn't like talking about it. He never believed that stuff before. But he does now, I'm pretty sure. What they call a mimic spirit. Hmm was watching stuff on TikTok about it. Very creepy. The other experience, we were sitting in our car just broad daylight when we heard a loud, clear knocking on the back car window. We turned around and couldn't see anything. 
So we checked the mirrors looking everywhere, and there wasn't even anyone close to the car or even in sight at all. It's spine-chilling. We sped off and avoided going there since. The ghost experience that went through a generation. When I was younger, around seven, I would hang out often with my two cousins, one seven, the other six. They used to live in a very old dentist's, so it was pretty creepy, very strange backstories. Although I personally didn't have more than one paranormal experience, they had many which I won't go into depth in this post. So, we were bored and I had heard about ghost hunters like the little paranormal nerd I've always been. I suggested to go find some ghosts and see the seven-year-old cousin. Suggested to go down to the basement. C was paranoid, but we convinced her to tag along. She begged their sister, 13 maybe, she begged her for her phone to get one of those apps. We downloaded it, and off we went. There were a couple of rooms all pretty empty from like a few toys which weren't large. We found a quiet room after looking and getting a large chill, probably a warning, sat down and opened the app. The app used a radar with red dots signifying the spirits. There were smaller ones, and each time it got closer or bigger, we got excited. There was a large one getting closer and closer until the lights went off. I heard a laugh and chills went down my spine. The biggest chill ever. Felt like there was a man dancing around us. Me being a Christian had a cross and some water which I blessed with a tutorial, sprayed it and held the cross saying a prayer. Guess that worked as the lights went back to normal. When I say we dashed, I never saw anyone move quicker. We went to the barbecue, everybody relieved and had a big sigh as we were gone for hours. It was like two and a half hours later, we explained the story and they nervously laughed like they were hiding something. We went on with the day, although nervously. Now, me being 15, I remember it vividly for the wrong reasons, and me and the cousin met up with our Nana who was there that day. She explained everybody was freaked out because when they moved in and explored the basement, he said the same thing happened to my dad, their dad, and their sister. Personal encounter with an entity as a kid. So I never really believed in two ghosts or any paranormal entities as a kid. Back then, during what I believe was my very first encounter, I was around 12 or 14 years old. It all happened very fast, and I simply couldn't explain what even happened to this day. It was evening. I was alone in my room. My parents were in a different room. I was just playing video games until I started noticing how something shadowy started appearing behind the corner in a hallway that led into my room. I've seen it just once with the corner of my eye, and I swear I even managed to see it move its head away to hide back. It didn't bother me that much at first. I brushed it off as some illusion or my brain playing tricks. But then minutes later everything changed. I suddenly saw what I can only describe as some kind of transparent shadow humanoid floating entity flying into my room was chaotically moving from side to side and towards me in a very fast manner. I immediately ducked my head down of fear and just looked again and it was gone. At this point, even after years, I argued with myself that it must have been some kind of illusion or hallucination. But there was one nuance when I saw the above described entity fly at me. The ceiling light flickered a few times when the ghost moved beneath it. There was just no way it was a coincidental flicker, because the ceiling lamp was brand new. Nevertheless, I can't stop thinking about that encounter for some time now. There were no reasons for a ghost, if it was one, to appear so suddenly. 
the apartment wasn't haunted in any way and had no negative history. Is there a category or a name for ghosts who take objects and return them in the same spot they took it from? If so, I'd like to know more about them, why they do it, and who they could be, or if they're even a ghost. So to begin my tale, the earliest I can remember is missing objects. That's ever since I was around 14 or 15. I'm 20 now. I got a ring for my 15th birthday. It would often disappear and would always randomly be on my dresser after weeks and months of it being gone. Now I always suspected something was wrong because it's a ring I would take care of really well. I wouldn't let it out of my sight so easily. But then it began to be like a game with other objects that I used often, like hair ties or controllers, and instead of months it would be minutes. First I used to blame it on my carelessness and just my inability to find objects. But today, I confirmed my suspicions. An hour ago, I was looking for my AC remote, which I always keep on my nightstand for easy access since it's next to the bed. I looked to my nightstand and it's not there. So I looked everywhere through my bed and flipped the room inside out. Then I look under the bed and when I stand back up, there it is. The AC remote perfectly aligned with the corner of the nightstand. My mom needs some answers about some possible childhood paranormal experiences. From about age 5 to age 11, when my parents divorced and we, mom, me, and four siblings moved in with my grandparents, I had the same recurring nightmare. In the dream, I would see myself sleeping in bed, in the exact nightgown I was wearing that particular night. I would wake up to a growling noise and see a pack of dogs coming toward me. There were three of them, and they were black and kind of smoky with glowing red eyes. They would come to me and start pulling at my nightgown and clawing at me as I kicked and screamed. Always before they pulled me out of bed completely, another dog would come in. But this one was different. It was much lighter, and its eyes were a dark brown. It would snarl at the others and bite and pull at them until they evaporated like smoke. The other one would just turn around and leave. After all these years, I can still remember how it felt in the dream. And I have issues with large dogs. I have never felt so unsafe and scared in my own home. I've never really experienced anything paranormal in my life until recently. To be honest, I wasn't fully sure that I believed in ghosts, but I liked the stories. Nice. The other night, me and my best friend were having a sleepover at my house. It was 1.30 a.m. We decided to go into my kitchen and get something to drink. I have a bathroom off to my kitchen, so I decided to use it first thing. Walked in, closed the door behind me, and locked it. I live in kind of an older house, with not many renovator, excuse me, with not many renovations. So the lock in this door is one of those stupid ones that you have to push it in until it clicks. I am 100% sure that I closed this door. Halfway through my piss, the door flung open and the lock popped to be unlocked. I immediately tried to close it again because, well, and when I tried to, it felt like somebody was pushing on the door to open it. I opened it a little to see if it was my best friend, but no one was standing there. I just closed it and continued on, but quickening my pace to see what my best friend wanted, still telling myself that it was just him. When I walked out, he was halfway across the kitchen. I asked him if he opened the door on me, even though there wasn't a single chance that he did. He obviously denied it. I shrugged it off and started pouring myself a drink. I then heard light footsteps approaching me from behind. I assumed that it was my cat, but nothing was there when I turned around. 
At this point, I'm not scared, but just confused. Me and my best friend wrapped up what we were doing and started heading up the stairs. From the top of the stairs, you can see into the entry of the kitchen, and I saw feet and legs standing there. Stared at it for a few seconds to make sure I wasn't just psyching myself out. Maybe it just wasn't a shadow, but I know what it was. We quickly ran into my room and stayed up for a bit before we got my confidence to go to bed. That night I had a terrible dream about the spirit in my kitchen, and it was extremely aggressive toward me. I woke up in a cold sweat and couldn't sleep again. Around 2 p.m. the next day, my friend had left. My parents were at work, so I was alone. I was in the kitchen boiling some water on the stove when my electric kettle randomly turned on behind me. I mean full speed boiling as if it had been boiling for minutes. Quickly turned around and looked at it until I realized it was not plugged in. There was no way this kettle would work without being plugged in. Turned it off and then plugged it in to see what was going on and now it won't even work. I quickly went to my room and remained there until my parents got home. Later that night, I was in my room and my TV turned on and out of nowhere. I didn't sit on my remote or anything and it was across the room. Now it's 2 a.m. and an hour ago someone started aggressively banging on my bedroom door. My parents are asleep and snoring and the cat is in my bed. No one else here. So, what do I do about this? Encounters with Three Entities Throughout my life, I believe I've come in contact with three different types of paranormal spirits that have affected me in one way or another. Very different type of situations. The first situation occurred when I was six. My family moved into a new town in a very old house. The house we moved into had a bit of history that we learned about later. An adolescent who lived in the house tried to commit suicide at least three times. Twice in the house and once in a big cedar tree out front. We didn't find out about it until we'd recently already been living in the house over a year and there was really nothing we could do that didn't mean we had to move. But it wasn't like it really should affect us. For the first few months living in that house, I would often wake and find pieces of this small china tea set on my headboard. I recall one very vividly it was heart-shaped, gold-trimmed saucer with a lady in a yellow dress waltzing with a guy. Total, I got about eight pieces. My sister got about five. My mom and dad had no clue where they were coming from. We also had a very protective St. Bernard in the house, so no one came in. While my sister and I were getting presents, my mom woke one night hearing our St. Bernard growling in my brother's room. A sharp shard of glass was laying on his pillow next to his head. Our St. Bernard would always sleep in my brother's room after that. The second entity I've come into contact with is going to move fast forward to like one and a half years. My mom is friends with a lady, Mrs. Bradstream. My older brother is in class with one of Mrs. Bradstreet's kids. I don't know if it's Bradstream or Bradstreet. It's summertime. They're moving away, so my mom offers to help with the garage sale. There's like eight kids total, ages 15 down to like four. At one point, the 15-year-old asked me if I want to go inside. It was hot out, so I did. I'm like seven. Somehow we ended up sitting in his closet. He asked me if I wanted to have sex with him. I knew sex was only for mommy and daddy, so I left his room. Good move. As I got downstairs, they had blankets over the windows to keep heat out. In the living room, I saw it. A tall figure leaning on the back of a sofa. His face was burnt. It was like an amber in color. Very long and angular. Dark, sunken, recessed eyes. It held a hand out toward me, took off running outside, and wouldn't leave my mom's side. Fast forward again, and I'm 19 at university in Juneau, Alaska. 
bit of backstop here is that it's kind of relevant, I think. I think that meant backstory. My friend and I were in the same course and coming home late at night. Probably around 10 p.m. At the school, you walk one and a half miles on the path in the woods to get home from campus to housing, with the highway halfway through it. It was very snowy. I was wearing boots, so I was clearing a path that sort of cut through the snow that had been falling. As we got up to the intersection, there was another student who was standing up there wearing boots, shoes, and jeans. So I told him to just follow us, and I was nice and polite. Told him I would break a path. Then he started kind of stalking me. I'll not include details of the stalking. If you want to know, you can ask. He ended up getting kicked out of school. But right before he got kicked out of school is when the event happened. I was walk campus. I was by myself in the middle of the day. I was on the path and at the top of the hill, and all of a sudden, standing in the woods in front of me was a tall figure, wearing dark clothing. It was that figure with the burnt umber face. It held its hand out to me again, and I remember just seeing a horrible tug from inside myself pulling me toward it. I just stood there staring at it, and it's like pulling me, it's like tugging. And I'm just like, finally, I'm like, no, and I turned and walked away. Looking back, I'm pretty sure that if I had let that tug pull me into the woods, that my stalker probably would have killed me. I'm sure that that being is showing up at a time in my life where I have a decision to make. Either go this way or that way. Either death or essay or get away myself. So far, I've gotten away terrifies the hell out of me even thinking back on those situations, knowing 100% positive it was the same figure I'd seen when I was 7, when I was 19. The next incident that I came across is back in my hometown. Before I can really tell about the incident, I do feel it is imperative to tell a little background about my hometown. My hometown is in central Minnesota and is one of the sites of the Sioux Uprising, where homesteaders were violently killed. There's actually a memorial on the outside of town. It's about the White Family Massacre, telling about the Sioux Uprising, and how the White Family was slaughtered in their home. So there's very violent history around this area. Back in 2013, I was moved in with my uncle. He'd been diagnosed with cancer. And he had lived alone, so I moved in. My uncle and I got along very well. I loved him dearly. Then he passed away in the house. It was about three or four days after he passed in the house that I started noticing things were off. There was a pillow that had been in my room on the top of a shelf that was suddenly in the living room. I moved the pillow from the living room and I put it in a cupboard behind the cabinet like a big heavy wooden bookshelf cabinet that must have weighed like 50 to 75 pounds. It wasn't easy to move. The next day the pillow was in the kitchen. I put the pillow in the garage and it was back in the house. The next day I put the pillow in a shed. It was back in the house. I don't know what was going on with that pillow, but it wanted to be in the house. I ended up pulling the stuffing out of the pillow, and I burned the pillowcase and used the stuffing and made a little stuffed animal that I still have. It sits on my bookshelf. It's been staying there ever since. Been there about eight years now. Then the other ones, I made other pillows and gave them away. Nobody had any issues. Recently, a neighbor of mine passed away in their house, and his nephew was living in the house with them when everything happened. The nephew stopped me outside and asked me if I knew of any paranormal things that have happened around this area. I'm like, yeah, and I told him that I'd had this experience with the pillow. He told me that the day after his uncle had passed when he took a shower, he had seen a small childlike figure walk past the shower. Nobody was in the house, but this figure walked by and just left finger lines across the steam on the shower wall. I was outside a couple of days after he had told me about that, and I saw a light go on inside the neighbor's house. I checked the vehicles outside, and nobody was home. The lights were on, and in about three minutes, the lights went out. They did this for over an hour, flashing on and off. 
So I asked my neighbor if they had, like, smart lights that would go off and on, kind of flicker when you don't have a good connection. He said, no, they never got any of those. So I mentioned the light going on and off, and I guess that happened when he was there one night as well. After the figure, he was too afraid to go do anything, so he just left the house and went out and slept in his fish house. I'm pretty sure that the town he's in is haunted by the spirits of the Sioux warriors and victims from the area who were part of the massacre. And it's like when death occurs, they come and they try to make us uncomfortable. Voices calling out my name. I wouldn't say this is a ghost or something, but me and my friend when we were young were on the stairs, just talking, when suddenly we both heard somebody call my name. The voice wasn't familiar, so we just stood at the place frozen for a while. Then we got our senses back, asked who it was, but no answer. We went down to check, but no one was there. It was a deep and manly voice. A few years later, we were going to the basketball court in our society on our way there, and we just again heard somebody call my name. But this time in my dad's voice. But he wasn't in the town at the moment. There was this little girl with us, and we asked her if she had heard it. She said no. There were even people around us that we asked them, but nothing for some reason in that moment. Truly felt like only we could hear it, because until now I never questioned why the people around us couldn't hear it. Since two people heard it, can't possibly be our minds playing tricks on us. We weren't even thinking anything horror at the moment that could lead to hallucinations. It was always my name that was called out. Still haven't figured out who or what it was, and it still bugs me to this day trying to figure out what it was caused by. Nothing has happened since. I don't know, does anybody know what this could be? Something I saw as a kid. I was at my grandma's house one time. I was around four years old at the time, and it was right after Halloween. And I say this because I remembered the tiger costume I wore that year. But anyway, I'm sitting on my grandma's lap, eating some candy and watching TV with her. When I happen to turn my head back and I see someone moving from one of the bedrooms to the bathroom across the hallway. It happened fast. And the figure was all black, but not like a shadow. It was a solid, cloaked-looking figure. At first, I didn't know what to think. I just kept watching. I thought maybe it was my cousin Easy playing a prank on me. He liked to scare the shit out of me back then, but Easy wasn't there. He was supposed to be at a friend's house, and it was just me and Grandma until my grandpa got off work later. So I sat there watching, and after a little time went by, I remember seeing the figure sort of poke its head out from the bathroom and wave at me. There was no face, it's like it was wearing a black veil and hood over their head. Anyway disappeared back into the bathroom before doing it again, popping out and waving at me. This time I alerted my grandma and told her there was someone in the bathroom. I was scared because I didn't know or understand who this could have been, but I know what I saw. The grandma gets up and walks down the hall to the bathroom. Mind you, no one ever exited the bathroom. Of course, after looking, there was no one there. I even followed her and looked myself. No one. So we checked all three other bedrooms after that, and there was no one in the house but us. I don't know what it was. I don't know where it came from. But this is something that has always stuck with me. Years later as an adult, I've had two dreams about the hooded shape and being whatever. That's it. I've never encountered anything else like it before. And I say this as somebody who's had his share of ghost-run encounters. Anyone else have any ideas or similar experiences as a kid? Yeah. Stalked 
by a Yosemite nightcrawler. I was 18 years old, living in a remote village nestled at the base of a looming mountain. I hadn't even smoked a cigarette or had a drink back then. I was definitely ill-prepared for the darkness that lurked beyond the safety of our tight-knit community. Our village veiled in an air of mystique, with a secretive religion of its own called Druze. It seemed shielded from the outside world by the towering peaks that surrounded us, and protection rituals that the sages would do. Little did I know that the sense of isolation would soon become a breeding ground for the inexplicable horrors that awaited me. It was midnight. The silence of the night enveloped us as my friend drove his two, excuse me, 2008 Mazda 3, a shitbox that you wouldn't want to be in when shit goes down. Ah, man. Navigating the winding roads that went through the fields of cherry and apple trees, everything was going well. Just another drive around the fields. We were in the middle of our usual chats. Suddenly something shot across the road with alarming speed. A blur of movement that left both frozen in disbelief. Turned to my friend, seeking confirmation in his wide-eyed expression. Without a word, he nodded, his grip on the wheel tightening. As he focused on the road ahead, I dared to glance to our right, where the trees cast long, twisted shadows in the moonlight. That's when I saw it, a figure unlike anything I'd ever encountered, tall and lanky, that moved with an unnatural grace, wavering between the trees as though they were mere playthings. Its skin, a sickly shade of white, stretched out over skeletal limbs, and its face was a grotesque mask of emptiness, save for a twisted smirk that sent a shiver down my spine. In a haze of fear and disbelief, I found myself behind the wheel driving faster than I have ever thought possible, desperate to escape the nightmare unfolding before me. But even as we raced toward the safety of the village, the creature seemed to taunt us, darting effortlessly between the trees on our right, a chilling reminder that its unnatural speed could easily catch up to us, even though we were going a hundred kilometers an hour, through twists and turns, too, and it somehow managed to keep up. The horrors of that night stay with me even now, etched into the very fabric of my being. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months, but the memory of that encounter refused to fade. It haunted me, lurking in the shadows of my mind, waiting for the opportunity to strike again. And strike it did. One fateful evening as I stood with my friends in what used to be a cherry field, now turned park, having a fun night out with the boys. As I finished eating, I asked where I could wash my hands. They pointed me toward a portable sink placed between rows of trees. I felt a bit of serenity as my friends' chatter faded and my mind calmed down. But as I glanced out into the darkness, my heart skipped a beat. There it was again, the white nightcrawler, its form barely discernible as it lurked behind a truck of a nearby tree. Trunk. I pretended not to see it all, played dumb and walked back to my friends as if nothing had happened. What else could I do? I felt that it's best to just let things settle down naturally, because confronting such a malevolent force seemed futile, and fleeing play into its hands. So I chose to carry on, to live each day with the knowledge that the darkness still lingered, waiting to strike once more. It sent shivers down my spine. I live now because that creature had mercy on me. Years passed, yet the memory of that encounter refused to fade. Found myself drawn to the whispers of the sages, their tales of otherworldly beings and ancient rituals offering a semblance of understanding in the face of the unknown. Has anyone ever encountered a nightcrawler here? Glenbula Cemetery Non-Fictional Story Hey guys, I'm just reflecting on something that happened probably 11 years ago now. And I would have been around the age of 10 or 11. 
Hang with me, I'm not the best writer. My parents were really into paranormal activity shows. They claimed that they've had encounters as well. Anyway, one night they decided they wanted to go to one of the most haunted cemeteries in Wisconsin to check it out. So we packed up the car and headed to Glenbula Cemetery, also known as Walnut Grove Cemetery. After about a two-hour drive, we started to pull down the windy road that ended at the cemetery, only to find there were people already there. Must have been close to 11 p.m. When we got there, we pulled up to the gate and the people approached our car and told us that we needed to leave due to it being private property. We didn't have permission to be there. My parents apologized, told them that they wanted to check it out because it was known as one of the most haunted places in Wisconsin. Told them that we'd just leave, but just as we were about to turn around, one of the men stopped us and told us that they were a paranormal investigation act excuse me, they were a paranormal activity investigation team. They offered for us to join them for the night, and we agreed. As we started, they placed a few flashlights with fresh batteries around the cemetery. Explained to us that if we were any well, if they had any spirits around, that they would draw the energy from the flashlights. We would know if they were there. After about 20 minutes, the flashlights would start flickering and then turn off. This happened a few times throughout the night, and each time the batteries were drained. Nothing crazy, but we were intrigued. One of the stories from the cemetery is that some people would like a... sort of see a childlike figure peeking out from behind a tree or sometimes playing. So the team we were put with, they put out a red ball that a child would play with. This ball was at the bottom of a small hill, and I shit you not. We were all standing around, and this ball began rolling up the hill. There was no wind or anything that could have rolled this ball uphill. I couldn't believe it. At some point, one of the guys that we were with sort of took us by one of the headstones at the back of the cemetery. We were sort of played at like a voice recorder. I believe that's what it was anyways. We played it in reverse to get that static noise you see in ghost shows. He began asking questions with nothing until he asked for a certain name. Wish I could remember it. We finally hear something abnormal, but nothing crazy. He then asks if this is the name, and it responded yes. We couldn't believe what we were hearing. He then asked when he was born, and you could hear the old man's voice say the year. Once again, I really wish I could remember, but I was a kid. It was unbelievable. You only ever hear or see the stuff on TV shows, but to be there in person, hearing it, it was just insane. The spirit eventually stopped talking, and suddenly I felt something touch me, and a flash of red orb go by, which everybody else saw. Then one of the flashlights sitting on a stone that had died a while before began flashing again, and as soon as someone went to touch it, it stopped, wouldn't turn back on. Pretty freaked out, we decided to take a break and go hang out by the trucks for a minute, have a soda. While I was following everyone, and I was in the back, I had turned around to look back at where we just were, to see a child peering around the tree at me. I screamed and it disappeared, and everybody turned around asking what was wrong. I didn't even know what to say. I was scared out of my mind. So we all end up at our trucks, just hanging out for a minute, just talking, telling stories and whatnot. And then one of the guys decided that we should all go check out the old gravestones. As we were checking them out, he told us to be quiet, told us to listen and ask questions to the dead, basically trying to get them to do something. While he was doing this, he had me put on a headset that amplified sound around you. A little time goes on, and suddenly I see one of those red orbs again off in the woods. I believe they call them red eyes or eyes. It's quickly gone. I was a little freaked out, but didn't say anything because I didn't want to ruin whatever was going on, when all of a sudden I feel something cold on my neck, and I hear someone or something whisper my name. I looked at my mom because I thought maybe she was trying to ask me something, and I just couldn't hear her right because of the headset. But she wasn't even looking in my direction. It took a few steps when suddenly I hear my name again this time, and it was loud, and it was stern, right into the headset. I looked up to see a manly figure running at me. 
I threw the headset off and started crying and freaking out, and I didn't have any words to say what had just happened, and just everybody there was with me. I uncontrollably was freaking the fuck out. My parents decided we needed to get the hell out of there, and we left. Up until that day, I never really believed in that stuff. But the things I saw and heard that night were far from imagination. It was one of the scariest, most unexplainable things I'd ever experienced. Ever since that night, I've had unexplainable encounters. Sometimes, I don't really believe in anything, but something might have attached to me that night, if that makes any sense. This is something that I didn't talk about for a long time, because I didn't think anybody would believe me. But here I am, finally telling the story from that night. My Personal Encounter Dump 1. I was around 6 or 7 when this first happened. I was sleeping in my room upstairs when I suddenly wake up at night and I hear something walking slowly up the stairs. I check if I'm dreaming. I wasn't. I sit there, too terrified to move or speak. The noise doesn't go away. Awake for maybe a half hour and somehow whatever was making the noise is still climbing the stairs. Felt like the sound was progressively making its way up the stairs, but at the same time wasn't moving. It's impossible to explain and I don't remember what happened after. 2. This was also around the same time as the last one. It was nighttime and the family came back home after a drive to some place when I look out the window and I see a clothed humanoid figure walking down the sidewalk. Its upper half was inhumanly, just leaned all the way back and its head was almost touching the ground as it walked. Its torso and arms were limply filling, sort of flailing like its top half was paralyzed, being carried by its legs. I told my parents, and being how young I was, wrote it off as a drunk person. 3. This happened when I was 10 or 12. I'm yet again sleeping in my room when I wake up and see something down the hallway. I sit up in my bed with the most powerful fear I've ever felt in my life. And as I stare at it, and it walks to my room. It was dark, but a nightlight shone its silhouette. Its upper half was humanoid, although it was missing a head. But its under half were hoarse or maybe spider-like. I don't entirely remember, but it stood over me as I was frozen in fear, and like the other story, I don't remember anything of what happened after. So it's really strange. It's like I have a blank in my memory, and like I should be able to remember, but it's just not there. I'm almost certain I wasn't dreaming in this one. 4. This is more of a UFO encounter, but I thought I might as well put it here. This happened when I was 15. I was taking my dog out. It was nighttime again. And I noticed something moving in the sky. I look up and see massive colored circles moving inhumanly fast across the clouds. They were either behind the clouds or just translucent. Some of them disappeared and some reappeared and moved in circles or lines with mechanical movement. It went on for three or so minutes until they ceased. Five. This isn't for me, but a story my brother shared. He worked at a high school as a custodian during the night, yet again. I don't know the specifics, but according to what I remember, he told me he saw a shadow from inside a classroom walk past a large window. He went into the classroom and felt something walk past him as he did. While I'm at this note, I might as well also mention how he once refused to sleep in his room and he claimed that he's felt something touch him as he slept. This wasn't just a week-long event, though he didn't sleep in his room for years until finally we swapped rooms and I was now sleeping in his room. My brother is not somebody to make up things like this, especially to tell them to my parents. 6. Kind of coming off of the last story, after sleeping multiple nights, me in his room, I've had several times where I've woken up to sort of a presence looming over me, having a spike of adrenaline, and kind of even make out a face when it happens, 
It almost looks like some sort of ancient statue. Not that I'm using it as a connection, but just that I have no real other way to describe it. It's made going to sleep really difficult for me. True story of my encounter with an unknown figure. My name is Bauman. I'm 20 years old and male. I'm from a small village in the north of Iran up in a mountain area surrounded by a large forest. The story is for two years ago when I was 18, 2021. It was partly cloudy. I was going to go for a walk in the forest like every day. In the main path of the forest it crosses from behind of our house. So it wasn't like a long walk, but it was just deep in the forest. A dirt road with trees around you as far as the eye can see. It was kind of late compared to usual. It's like 5.30, 6 o'clock. It was getting dark, but because I was familiar with the path, I wasn't worried. I was thinking I'll be back soon. It just kind of made me go for it. I was about 20 minutes into the walk. It was just kind of keep getting darker every minute. I get to the part of the path that straight road for like a thousand feet and you can somewhat see the end of it. And as I was slowly walking in that road, I see a dark figure at the end of the road. Just a black thing standing in the middle of the road. It was like a dusk kind of time, so I wasn't sure what I was looking at specifically in the distance. My first thought was that it was probably a cow. It's a village, so many people have farms around here. Sometimes they let their cows in the woods for days, but in kind of a large group. But I thought, then why is this one alone? Most importantly, why is it not moving? Believe it or not, I don't know why, but I didn't stop. It was the curiosity, maybe, or just didn't want to be a pussy if it's a prank or some guy from the village. I don't really know what I was thinking in that moment. I just remember just looking at the thing without a blink as I was walking toward it. The thing that creeped me out the most was why the hell this thing didn't move an inch. I was just getting more and more scared as I was getting closer to it. I started to see a shape. It was like a tall figure, long and skinny legs. At one point I think I saw a third leg or maybe a stick in his hands. I don't know exactly, it was so blurry. I kept walking and still not knowing what I'm looking at. My heart, it was just coming out of my mouth. Stopped at maybe 60 feet of the figure, just looking at it, standing still without a single move or anything. I didn't have the courage to say anything. I remember just thinking, fuck it. Turned around, walked away. As I was walking back, I constantly looked back at my shoulder, paranoid of seeing that thing move. But every time it was just standing there and kept getting more further away and finally out of sight. It was almost completely dark at this point. After a few turns, I kind of calmed down a little bit. I didn't get that worried. I didn't run home like crazy and I kept walking normal and I try not to think about what just happened. I just started working with my phone to maybe call a friend to just talk with them till I get home. And just before that, for the last time, I looked back. Something I wish I never did. I saw something that traumatized me for life. Still makes my hand shake from fear to this day. I saw the same blur black figure standing still in the middle of the road looking at me like 50 feet. I didn't stand there to see it move. Or not this time. I just run for my life. I run like if I stopped, I would die. I didn't look back once. I just run home. When I get home, my hands and feet were shaking. Something that I've never experienced, and I hope I never do again. My family was worried, too, after I told them what just happened. They told me I was hallucinating. But I could tell from their eyes that they're shocked and scared as I am. I never experienced such a thing again. Never mention it with anyone until today. But this experience will forever be in my mind, and it'll haunt me forever. See ya.
Step into the unknown with Paranormal M, where reality meets the supernatural. Don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications to be the first to experience our latest spine-tingling narratives. Hit that like button. Scary beings are a good sign. These beings, be they aliens or demons, seem to be evil, a majority of them. In the Islamic tradition, some of these beings are Muslim, Christians, and atheist, but not all are evil. So if they come to you in the form they choose is scary to you, then that is a good thing because they don't believe that they can come to you in a good form because that won't quote-unquote work on you, try to befriend you and abuse you. I know of the story of a Muslim girl who had serious issues father went to Iraqi, a Muslim exorcist, told him that his daughter was being dragged downstairs by a being that was claiming, was claiming her to be his. Long story short, the Iraqi found out that this demon alien being came to her in a good form. She slowly stopped being afraid, started to accept this being. They fornicated again and again until she started to feel weird. Sometimes, if we accept these beings, weird things seem normal, like floating small amounts off the floor. When she wanted to stop the relationship, Hip, the being, would not want to leave her. And this is when it started acting out, and the family started realizing that she was possessed. She was helped by the exorcist. But the point is, is that if they're trying to scare you, they will take the form that does, and they only scare you if you're doing good enough job at resisting their influence over you in everyday life. If you're being a good person in this day and age that bar is set pretty low, then these beings will resort to dream state attempts at corrupting you. If you're trying to be a good person, that is enough for you to level yourself a good person. The enemy's real. The fight is real. Keep on fighting. You lose all the battles and still win the war. Random Pink Light My husband and I were both playing a video game on our own desks at night. Our desks sit side by side. We're no more than three feet from each other, and we were facing the wall. Our blinds are closed, and our room is pretty lit by our lighting above. Then all of a sudden, a bright pink light blinded the both of us. It lasted no more than a snap of a finger would last. But it was quiet, but insanely bright. The best way to describe it is as if somebody was standing in like a foot from your face and took a picture with those Polaroid cameras. Only with this light being pink, and once it was gone, we had no lingering annoying light that clouded our vision for a minute afterwards. Poof, and it was gone. I yelled repeatedly, What the fuck was that? My husband was smart enough to say, Check the time. 11.50 p.m., he mentions how he'd looked at the time a few minutes before the pink flash, and it was only 11.45. So no missing time. This light was seen by both of us, so it can't be any retinal distortion. I called my sister right away, and she thought maybe it was like a computer glitch. But I reassured her that if it had been for my computer screen, then I'd be able to see my desk and everything on it. But that flash was so incredibly bright. It's like it blinded bo pretty much both of us completely. And it was pink. Like it couldn't have been our lighting in our room. We just have an overhead light. No neon lights, no pink lights. I can't think of a single explanation. That night we went to sleep. My husband woke up and started yelling, Oh fuck, oh fuck! which in almost a decade of sleeping next to him, he has never startled awake like that, ever. After asking if he was okay and what was wrong, he just said he had to go pee. 
Later the next day, I asked him about it. He said that he had a nightmare and he had just died. I don't know if it was related to that or the flash of pink light, but I think it was worth mentioning since, again, he has never woken up yelling and scared before. Big Red House. Long read, FYI. There's one house in particular that I've been in and out from birth to 13 years old. This house is one of four or five historic landmarks of Grafton. It's in Wisconsin on the corner of 12th Avenue and Spring Street. This house was my favorite house, and it was always haunted as fuck. This house was built in the late 1800s and was originally owned by the Weber family. The factory that they ran is still standing kitty corner across the street covered by a bunch of vines and overgrown trees and bushes. You can actually see the faint name on the building if standing really close and in the right light. So to kind of give you the grand basic tour of the house, which is needed, it's a Victorian style home with the turret facing spring. The side of the house by the driveway is where everybody comes and goes out of. I never use the main entrance. On the driveway side, there's a window leading up to the second floor, which is where the stairs are to get to the second floor. We lived in the upstairs second and third floors, as the second floor has a kitchen as well. My grandma, who owned the house, lived in the first floor, and then we all used the basement. Upon entering the side of the house, right when you walked in to the left is the door to the basement. Straight ahead are three steps, and then to the left is the stairs to the second floor. Straight ahead are doors to my grandma's part of the house. Once in her part, you are in the dining room. To the right by her entryway is an old maid door, which on the other side is the kitchen. There's an entryway to her kitchen as well, which was also her pantry. And then once in the kitchen is her bathroom. To your left of the entryway is her bedroom and then the living room. Basement. Once at the bottom of the stairs, far left is the woodwork tool room. Kitty corner straight ahead had two storage rooms and then to the left was more storage. To the right was where the laundry was done and in there was a giant cistern. This is how old the house had been. It was back when it was built. That's how they got water. Second floor. Left was when we lived there. A den and the TV room and then there was a foyer. The kitchen and a bathroom along with the stairs to the third floor. And the top of the third floor to the right was my room, which was also part of the turret. Kitty corner left was my dad's room, then down the hall on the left was the bathroom, and farther down was two bedrooms. My brother slept in those. There was also an attic that I never saw myself. My grandma said it was empty. Here are my experiences. I hated this basement. I always was terrified of it, not because it was damp, icky, and dark, but because it always felt like, well, the sense of somebody watching me or something was going to get me. And I got very strong vibe to the point that it gave me goosebumps. I absolutely refused to go into the storage rooms down there. Could never explain why. The cistern gave me the chills. I always had every single light on down there. Foyer. My grandma had renters in between us living there. She had a stereo, which, well, she didn't really know how to operate, but... It did always play music at 3 p.m. My grandma didn't know how to turn it off, so she unplugged it. And it would still play music. One of my brother's punishments as a kid was if his toys were taken away. My dad would take out the batteries, too. I remember waking up in the middle of the night to hearing a strange noise. My brother's room was pretty far from mine, so how I heard it, I have no clue. 
but all I heard was this er, er, er from his room, and it was one of his remote control cars. I froze. Goosebumps popped up. I'm Humper, just hyperventilating. Pull myself together and turn on his light to inspect. This car was turned off, batteries were out, and remote had no batteries either. My brother sweats when he's in deep sleep. This was the only way I could ever tell he was sound asleep and not waking up or fake sleeping. He was sweating. I threw his car and just turned off his light and ran to my room. Multiple occasions I remember the sound of shuffling boxes across the floor, but from the ceiling. Again, my grandma said there was nothing up there. She blamed it on bats. In between my dad's room and the bathroom was a boiler room. Every night before bed, I would close this door tightly and lock it. I always got up in the middle of the night to pee, and every time the door is wide open. Multiple times I would hear it unlock and open. One of the renters who lived in our TV room was sleeping, and in the middle of the night felt the feeling of somebody sitting at the end of his bed. He woke up, didn't see a figure, but an imprint on his bed. My grandma's dad was living in her, well, living with her, excuse me, before he passed, was sleeping in a room on the first floor. Her bedroom at the time was my dad's room. He saw a figure with an old army coat from the Navy. The last time my grandma was in the house was packing up the last of things to move. She was in the house going to the bathroom, and her husband at the time was outside across the driveway over by the neighbors. My grandma heard somebody coming up the three stairs on the side of the house, shuffled feet and muffled steps. My grandma thought it was Keith, her husband. A few seconds later, he comes barging in, so she tells him. He said, that's weird, I thought you were going upstairs. She goes, no, I was in the bathroom. He said, I saw a dark figure going up the stairs as I was walking back from the neighbor and I thought it was you. The neighbors were friends of my grandma, and even after they moved, they hired a medium to come and inspect the house. The neighbors told this lady nothing about the history of the house, or the layout. She didn't explore the house at all. She only stayed in the first floor. She gave details of the house layout perfectly, and this house was haunted by three ghosts with a dark past. Here's what the medium found and told her by the ghosts themselves. The three ghosts are the mother Weber, the father and the son. The son died at a young age in his twenties from yellow fever. He was also in the military. The son did not have a good relationship with the father. Father was very abusive and even had his drunk friends abuse him too, sexually and physically. The father would drag the son to the storage rooms in the basement and beat him. So would his friends. His hiding spaces were the crawl spaces in my brother's room and the boiler room. The son then said he killed his mother. As a ghost. He said he was watching his mother do laundry and she was bent over the cistern wall. He said as a ghost that he pushed her in. She drowned. Supposedly, that's how the mother died, was from drowning in the cistern. He said he was so mad at her for allowing him to be abused all of his life. The son mentioned the activity was due to him not wanting my grandma to leave because he liked her and he felt safe. Because she takes care of the kids like him. My grandma was a foster mom to boys who were troubled. There's no way this medium would know any of this. Since my grandma moved out, it's been a bed and breakfast ever since. Got put on the historic landmark. Dream Visitors First, I'm not a big dreamer. I don't often dream, or at least I don't remember if I do dream. The dreams I do remember I can't really explain and don't remember for long. My dreams are like weird movies. I'm not an active player. 
My point is the fact that I have, well, I've remembered any part of these dreams being out of character for me. I also don't have lucid dreams or have sleep paralysis. Anyway, my first experience was eight years ago. I was sitting in an American southern church, something you would see in a movie. I was sitting in the middle towards the back of the church. Suddenly a well-dressed man was sitting next to me. He had a charming vibe. Think Lucifer from the TV series if he was subtle. I noticed him and he would say to me something along the lines of, Can you believe people buy this crap? He said it in a way that suggested everybody else there was stupid and we were smart. I affirmed that I believed in Jesus and God and woke up. This was a very clear dream at the time. It's kind of stayed with me. My second could just be a dream, but it happened a year or so ago. This time, I appeared to be in an airport, and this plain woman asked or told me I had to go with her, claimed to be an angel. I started going with her when I sensed something was off about her. She didn't really take her eyes and didn't really look right, kind of in a hurry. It was like she was a robot or something wearing a human face that just didn't quite fit. We were at the baggage area where she was packing clothes or something into her bag. She kept looking around, sensing something wasn't right. I decided to test her by asking her to say the name Jesus Christ. She refused and urged me to go with her. That's when I knew she wasn't an angel. I kept saying his name until I woke up. If she had been able to say the name, I would have gone with her. I haven't had any other dreams that I can remember where I can think and make decisions or have any real awareness. Heard a voice calling my name outside my bedroom window at 11 p.m. So this literally just happened last night. I'm not really sure if it's paranormal, but it's pretty creepy. So my room is up against the front side of my house on the second story. There's a window facing the front yard right next to my bed. I'm sitting there reading a book with my lamp on when I start hearing my name outside. First it was so quiet that I didn't really hear it or pay attention to it. But then it got louder and louder. I was really confused because it sounded like my old neighbor just moved out visited that same day, because it sounded like an 11-year-old boy's voice, although it sounded off from my old neighbor. I was confused, though. He had visited my house that day and had already left to go back to his house in another town. Plus, it was really late at night for him to be trying to get to me to go outside. I could tell from the tone of voice that whoever it was was trying hard to get someone's attention. But right when I paid attention to the voice and thought all this, the voice stopped, and I realized that my shadow was being projected onto the window because of the lamp. I looked out the window, didn't see anyone there, but I heard as if someone was opening and closing the downstairs window on the side. I went downstairs and checked with my sisters who were watching TV. I asked them if the TV was loud or if they heard somebody calling my name to both of which they said no, and the TV was actually really quiet. Then I went into my parents' room to ask them about it. Both of them had been asleep and heard nothing. I just went back to sleep at that point and nothing else happened. The thing is, this isn't the first time I've heard voices at that window. Years ago when my house was severely haunted, I was opening the blinds in the morning and I heard a woman whisper right into my ear, Good night. I could even feel breath on my ear. I smiled because I thought it was my mom messing with me and saying good night when it was morning. I turned around with a smile and my smile immediately disappeared from my face. There was nobody in the room. Everybody else was either across the hall or downstairs completely. Plus, I didn't hear anyone come or leave. Hopefully others have seen something similar. 
This happened to me when I was 16, and to this day I still don't have an explanation as to what it was. Well, I was playing Xbox at the time. I had the window to my room open because it was the middle of August and it was hot. The time was about 11.30 at night when I decided to turn everything off. I got up to turn off my light, and when I did, I heard a woman's hum. I turned the light back on and looked around, but chalked it up to me going crazy. When I turned the light off again, I walked over to my bed and was about to lay down when I heard the hum again. But this time, I knew it was coming from outside. At this point, I started to freak out a little because I didn't know what was there. So I creeped up to the window and looked outside in the darkness. There was nothing there initially, until this orange mist-like anomaly that was maybe two feet tall by two feet wide passed in front of my face from left to right, and I absolutely freaked out. I ran to my dad at the time and told him about it, but he didn't believe me. He said I was just tired. I couldn't sleep in this room for a few weeks, and for context, my window's about 11 feet off the ground, so I know it wasn't a person. And I know it wasn't an animal because I'd never seen an animal glow in the dark in Chicago suburbs. What I do know is that this thing was curious with me at the time, and to this day I still don't know what it was. Have any of you ever ran into something like this? Disturbing creature watching in the house. My sister oftenly suffered from sleep paralysis. She was saying it's a creature that tries to suffocate her, but she got used to that until the paralysis was happening less often. Well, as always, I was thinking it's nothing serious or something paranormal as sleep paralysis. It's a pretty well-known thing. Straight to the point. Last year, exactly on the 18th of November, she had a disturbing feeling. It was about 3 a.m. She wasn't sleeping and was simply playing a game or something on her phone. Suddenly, one of her ears started vibrating. It's a similar effect to one that happens after an explosion. Then, from her words, she looked toward the direction that she felt the vibration from and saw that creature. She also was silently crying and laughing at the same time, but she got the courage to take a photo of it. After that, we forgot about this incident. We usually teased her, saying, The little house monster is watching you. Which probably pissed her off, because we didn't really believe in her words and thought it was just a simple window reflection. However, about a week ago, on the 11th of January this year, she saw the same creature watching strangely from the bathroom window. The creature seemed to be the same one she saw before. This time, the picture was clearer, and that thing no longer looked like light reflection, but an actual being. I remember her running back into the kitchen room, telling me that she saw it again. Can't understand what this is, but yesterday she claimed that she saw that creature again at 2.50 a.m., but before it... I swear, ten minutes before, I felt like half of my body became numb. I felt overwhelmed. She couldn't sleep an hour after that. I stayed up listening to music, trying to feel better. Paranormal Activity in My Apartment so I live in a three-bedroom apartment with my husband and cat. We've been living here for a little over a year now, and in the past year we've experienced some unexplainable phenomena. The most common being doors being open after we've shut them. We shut a door, we leave or walk away, come back, and the door is fully opened. We've also noticed heaters being turned on and neither of us turned them on. We've brushed a lot of this off as we do have a cat, and we're both ADD, so we figure maybe we just forgot about opening a door. But the more it happens, the more we question it because all of our doors have doorknobs, so it's not like she can just grab them and twist them. 
We might forget things from time to time, but not as often as we've been noticing things. I've had it happen a couple of times where I'm showering and I hear the door open and I look and it's shut. I've also experienced the door opening while I'm in the shower and no one's in there. The apartment community is older, but the vintage magic tricks my husband. He sort of collects these things. Or I guess my, her husband collects vintage magic tricks. They could be older. I told my husband the other day that if there's a spirit in the apartment, it's probably from his vintage magic trick collection. We joke about it from time to time. I don't know if spirits can really attach themselves to inanimate objects like they do in The Conjuring or not, but if they could, you would think that they would be generalized to where the magic tricks are located. But all of the instances have been throughout the apartment. Anyways, the reason I'm posting this is because this morning, my husband woke me up early this morning asking me what I wanted. I didn't understand what he meant because I was asleep, and he said he heard me say his name. Later in the morning, he asked me if I remembered saying his name at all. I told him I might have been sleep talking, but I don't talk in my sleep usually. Actually, I don't think I ever have. At least nobody's ever said anything about it. I decided to look into spirits mimicking people and found here on good old Reddit that this is actually pretty common. Paranormal experiences working at a funeral home and cemetery. Combo location. I'll start off with the typical light stuff. One of my coworkers tends to come in very early every morning to start at work. I like to kind of stay late, and we both spend a good amount of time alone in the funeral home. We both have had experiences of hearing footsteps down the halls, wood floors and long hallways that echo, seeing things out of the corner of our eye, hearing faint voices. Nothing too surprising considering there's like an abundance of loved ones in our, you know, care at every given time. Some having more traumatic passings than others. I will admit, though, that the funeral home itself is pretty tame. There have been many strange occurrences in the cemetery experienced by the ground's crew, cemetery staff, and funeral home staff. One day I was standing at a service. It was early morning. I turned and saw a man under a tree not too far away from me. He looked at a place and I saw no cars around beside the few the family drove. I turned to look at him once more, and then for a third time a minute or so later, and he had vanished. This has happened to multiple people too, mind you, and we have seventeen gardens. I would have seen him walking away or would have seen the car he was in. A co-worker of mine on the cemetery side worked with the man for a while after his wife passed. He wanted a granite pedestal, a stand that holds an urn with a sort of customizable topper. He wanted it with a bird bath on top. For about a year, he would hound my coworker wanting to know when it would arrive. That's when, unfortunately, the expected waiting period for custom granite memorials was pretty long. When it finally arrived, we placed his wife inside and had a service. A few months after, my coworker who worked with him woke up from her sleep because she kept hearing bird bath, bird bath, bird bath being yelled in her ear. She actually came in the next morning and said he died before he had even received the first call, notification of a death. Lastly, to avoid this being too long, is two stories about our chapel mausoleum. It is the only mausoleum on site with an interior and has large stained glass windows and rows of chairs to sit and visit loved ones, or for when services are held inside. This mausoleum is locked every day at 4 when the grounds team leaves. It's unlocked at around 6 or 7 a.m. One morning one of the guys walked into the mausoleum after unlocking it to turn on the lights, saw a woman sitting in one of the chairs by the windows facing away from him, he freaked out and walked out to call the superintendent. When he walked back inside, the lady was gone. There is only one entrance to that mausoleum. He was standing right in front of it. 
We heard knocks and shifting noises all the time in that mausoleum. It's so prevalent, I actually address everyone in there when I enter and exit to avoid any bad juju. We had a maintenance crew working on the mausoleum for a while that would come in every morning to find their tools moved all around the room. They would set them on one side of the chapel and come back to them on the other side of the room. One of the workers said he would never, ever come back. What was it? A watcher? A portal being? No idea where to go. Not going to do a lengthy backstory, except that I was raised outdoors. Hiking, saltwater fly fishing, hunting, and I'm an Eagle Scout. This happened 20 years ago in the panhandle of Florida. I had been working 12-hour night shifts for almost a year. I wasn't drunk or on anything else. I took my 67 Firebird convertible to an old car wash around 1.30 a.m. No other cars were there, and it was located on a main road, but being a medium-sized city, there wasn't much traffic at the time. I pulled the car into the vacuum machine with the front facing the road and the rear toward the open-ended car washing bays. Took out the floor mats, started the loud machine, started cleaning. Almost three quarters of the way through it, I was bent over half in, half out of the car. Got the overwhelming feeling I was being watched. Leaned out of the car and stood up. I was not expecting what I saw. It's hard to describe, but I'll do my best. Behind me was one of the car wash bays. Three of them connected together with cinder block walls between them. Typical style setup. Hose on the side, no front or rear so you can drive through it. Round 20 foot ceilings. Top of the ceiling had a large light that illuminates the stalls and projects about 10 feet on either side of the stalls. It had been using this as sort of a car wash my whole life until I moved from the area. There was something there, not standing, just there. I wouldn't describe it as floating, but it wasn't touching the ground. Seemed the shape was about seven feet tall and the bottom was two feet off the ground. This will sound insane, but here it goes. It was like looking at someone's shadow. You could make out a head area, shoulders where the arms would be in leg area, proportioned like a tall human would be. But it was all a shadow. No gaps for the armpits or center lines for legs. A standing shadow, I guess I would call it. The main body shape was black with a little TV-like fuzz effect through it, on older TVs. Around its full outline I can only describe as static electricity. Nothing was shooting out everywhere away from it, but arching around it. I didn't believe it for a second. I noticed that everything else looked normal, so I wasn't having a heart attack or a seizure. I could see the fencing dumpsters back behind it. It was literally almost in the middle of the washing stall, but more to the front. I was around 20 yards away from me. Got no bad feelings from it, didn't feel sick, just like it was observing me. The loud vacuum was still running. I couldn't hear anything coming from it, so I don't know if it made any noise. I acknowledged it in my mind. I thought, okay, I see you. I'll get my things and leave. Never approached or moved, it was just there. Went around the car and grabbed my floor mat on the passenger side, no clue why should have just left, rounded the front of my car with it still just there, sat down, started the car, looked back and it was gone, drove off immediately. Don't expect anybody to understand, just knew if it wasn't, well, I knew that it wasn't there to harm me. I've had a few other weird happenings in the woods, but nothing crazy. I really just felt like it was a watcher, it was there just to observe. I've searched for other encounters with descriptions like this, but I found none. Sorry if my voice is hard to hear today, singing all day and my voice is kind of destroyed. But we press forward anyway. On to the next story. <clears throat> Weird Experience in Morocco 
My story is from 2014. I was 19 years old, and it happened in the middle of the day, between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. Can't remember exactly. I was in Morocco, in a very small village of 30 people near a beach in the Atlantic coast. There were two dogs in front of the house to protect it. My family wanted to go to the beach, but I was starting to get flu symptoms, so I decided to stay in the house and rest. Even if I would be alone all day, I didn't want to catch a cold at the beach or whatever. From now on, I have to say that I didn't take any medication or anything else to feel better, so it's not a case of hallucinations. I was laying on the bed just reading a fantasy book. No music, no TV. Nothing that could do any sort of noise. At some point I heard the two dogs barking so loudly, as if an unknown person was coming. I went to the window quickly, but no one was there. No family member, no stranger, nobody. A few seconds after hearing the dogs barking, I started to notice that I was hearing another noise. A very strange noise coming from the kitchen. It was like whispers. Like if two or three women were whispering some sort of incantations in the kitchen. I was so afraid I didn't know where these whispers came from. It wasn't from the pipes, nor from the wind. There was no wind that day. It was just there, floating in the air, and I couldn't do anything to make it stop. After three minutes, the whispers and the barking stopped simultaneously. Since that day, I'm afraid to be alone in remote houses like that, especially if no one's there. I'm also afraid of dogs. I never knew what happened that day. I never actually asked anybody what it could have been. I never had any other weird experience. Another weird story in Morocco. I think it was around 2005 or 2006. So I was 10 or 11. I don't remember exactly, but I wasn't, well, I wasn't even a teenager for sure. But I was in Morocco in a village near the city of Tafarout. I was attending a family wedding in a very big house. It's like an old riad. Meaning that when somebody was ringing the bell, we had to walk nearly five minutes to go to open the door. There was no automatic system to open the door from the inside. Something ringed the bell, and I went to open the door. But when I arrived and opened it, nobody was there. The only thing I found on the floor was an egg. The egg was carved with weird symbols like Nordic runes, but I guess it was old runes from the area. I didn't touch it because I found it weird, so I called a cousin who told me that somebody was trying to curse the bride. Something unbelievable happened this morning. I'm frozen. I still don't know what's happening. I've already posted twice on the sub with similar experiences like this, but this is the craziest thing I've experienced. This morning I woke up as I normally did at around 6am, picked up my phone and started messaging my friends and watching videos as I normally do. Around 10 minutes in in my peripheral vision I see a woman walk through my doorway. At first, I didn't bat an eye. thought it was just my brain playing tricks on me. So I looked to its direction. My heart dropped to my stomach. It didn't disappear. It was a woman. Not a shadow figure, but a woman who didn't, I didn't recognize. Very tall, around 50 years old as it looked. Had long, ginger, curly hair whose head was tilted slightly. Just staring emotionlessly, excuse me, emotionlessly at me. I stared in utter paralyzing fear for around three seconds before it blinked and she was gone. At that point, I was frozen in my bed with my phone dropped on the floor for a solid minute before I finally snapped and threw my duvet off and sprinted down the stairs to wake up my parents like an eight-year-old. At that point, I was on the border, bursting into tears. My parents just said they were just tired, told me to go back upstairs. It was only later that morning that they actually took me seriously. It's also important to mention that at the time, I was not tired and was for sure not dreaming or daydreaming. Are there any possible explanations for this, or am I just going crazy? 
Let me know so I stop getting shaken up by this. Child Spirit Encounter So today I was at the park. Pretty normal, I was chilling, and despite being a teenager, I decided to go on the big swings for the good old times. I kid you not, I wasn't even swinging hard enough for the swing next to me to move, but it did. Not that it was windy either. There was no wind at all. So I opened my spirit box app that I have in my phone to scare my friends from time to time, since there's kind of not big believers in ghosts. I didn't speak at all, I just let whatever was next to me talk. I heard, here, and next to you, then some weird static noises so I couldn't quite figure out what they were saying. I usually hear a lot of voices talking over each other on the app, but now it was just only one voice. I got off the swing with my app still open and heard, come back. So I did. The swing next to mine was still swinging even when I fully stopped. I just sat there, zooming out. Then I felt like something was pushing me, which gave me chills down my spine, and that sensation that people feel when their heart drops to their stomach. But it was peaceful in some way. I wasn't scared or anything. Then I got up once again, and after a good amount of time passed, like five to ten minutes, I decided to go back to it, and saw that even though my own swing stopped, the other one didn't. I did talk to a child spirit a few days ago, and he might be following me around. I don't know, I'm just delusional maybe, and don't know how physics work. I also started seeing shadows in the forms of people in the corner of my eye. But that might just be paranoia. Again, I'm not sure if I'm exaggerating. Edit. I've only had one more talk through the spirit app with the spirit. It wasn't very long, just usual questions about how he died and stuff. Then he told me that he wants me to tell him. He wants me to tell him, Mom, that he misses her. So I did. I found her weird, I know, and I commented on her post about how her son misses her in such a manner. Looks like encouraging words. Gray creature walking on all fours in the woods. What was it? For context, I live in rural northwest Arkansas. I was in the backseat of a car riding through the woods this past December when I saw it. It was very tall and it was walking on all fours, but its hind legs brought its rear up a good foot or so above its head. I would say it was about as tall as a person. It was very thin and bony, but it looked like it had grayish pale skin over its body. It was walking just behind the tree line on the side of the road. The car was going about 40 miles an hour on a straight road. So I had a few solid seconds of looking at this thing before we passed it. And I know it wasn't just an optical illusion, I saw the thing clear as day. My family said it might be a deer with chronic wasting disease. But it was much taller than any deer I've ever seen. Its body wasn't shaped like a deer at all either. It had a humanoid face that I can't really describe other than looking sort of like a small human head. But was something wrong with it? Like sickly gray and emaciated. No antlers or anything, just a freaky face. Its mouth was hanging open and it had solid black holes like things for eyes. It's honestly terrifying and it still has me pretty freaked out been trying to figure out what it may have been, but I haven't found anyone who's seen something matching that description. My closest guess was that it might be a wendigo or a skinwalker. Fingered I'd post here to see if anybody has any theories on what it could have been. Dormant Ghost. Uptick in Activity. For context, I've worked in the same office building for over three years now. My coworkers have always talked about a ghost being here. I work at a mental health clinic. There are only ten of us. Usually less due to people who have WFH, work from home. We're all spiritual people, 
and all believe in ghosts. Haven't had my own experience, but others have. I've talked to co-workers who have worked in the building prior to myself. They reported nothing happening when they were here. The activity started off as very infrequent and inconsistent, like one to two times a year, and has been increasing to new activity every couple of months. The activity, my knowledge of the ghost, started with a closet door that you couldn't really or wouldn't even open. It was like unlocked. My coworker said it felt like a force on the other end. The door later opened on its own despite a few of us trying to get in there. There have been other run-of-the-mill stuff like footsteps and phantom cigarette smell. Doors opening and closing. Door chimes going off when no one is here. And it's escalated to two apparition sightings in the last few months. Saw a very tall, skinny yellow figure standing in my bedroom doorway as a child. This still haunts me to this day, and I can't explain what I saw. Curious if anybody else has had or heard of a similar experience. This was in 91. I was about seven years old at the time, and I remember my sister and I shared a room with separate beds. She's two years younger. Our parents put us to bed for the night. It was pitch black in the room, no nightlight or anything or TV. I remember I just couldn't fall asleep for some reason this night. My sister was knocked out pretty quick, or I probably would have bothered her out of boredom. I remember staring at the ceiling for a while and out of the window a lot, until I looked across the room. Standing in my doorway was a very tall, skinny figure. It was solid with glowing yellow. There was no facial features at all, but it had long arms and long legs. It was just frozen. And I was just frozen. I had so much fear and I couldn't make any noise, to be honest, because I thought it was going to attack me or something. As a kid, I instantly put the covers over my head, hoping it would leave. I peeked out about three times to see if it was gone. It wasn't. It just stood in the same spot, its head almost touching the top of the doorway, and it never moved. It just stood there each time I looked. So I finally mustered up the strength to scream out for my parents very loudly and I started crying. I remember my dad rushing in and he walked straight through to this thing and turned the light on. I remember telling them this story that night. And to this very day I cannot sleep with a single door open. I've had other weird paranormal experiences over the course of my life but never saw it again or really any figure. Still scared one day I'll see it again but who knows. As an adult. I remember talking about it at a family event and my uncle casually bringing up my imaginary friend, Bebo, I had back then. I have no clue if that's related, but freaked me out. First, I'd never heard of him. Just curious about any similar stories or things anybody's seen about anything like this. Savannah, Georgia Ghost Sighting I've shared this on a couple of other threads, hoping to find somebody who may have seen something similar in a graveyard in Savannah, Georgia. Not sure exactly which graveyard it was, but it may have been the Colonial Park Cemetery. In the fall of 2006, I was visiting Savannah, Georgia, went on a ghost tour. While we were in the graveyard at night, the tour guide was telling us some stories about the people buried there. There was enough light around her to see around a little bit, and out of nowhere I saw a pair of legs and feet walking out from behind her. The figure just casually walked by and then disappeared. It looked like the figure was wearing an old pair of boots, like maybe what you would expect a soldier to be wearing in the 1700s. I was 13 at the time, and I just stood there in disbelief as to what I had just seen. After I unfroze, I realized I should try to take a picture, but the figure had already disappeared. I was so freaked out. Didn't really think anybody would believe me. Just kept it to myself. Never really believed in ghosts, but this was 10,000% confirmation for me that they are real. 
few times over the years, I try to look at reviews of the tours to see if anybody else has seen the same thing, but with no luck. I know there have been a lot of ghost sightings in Savannah, but I do wonder if anybody else had seen this particular apparition. Who was singing? About two years ago, I, a female 24 currently, was with my best friend, a female 23 in her parents' house, which happens to be one street away from my parents. We hung out there after work and school and at the weekends, any free time that we both had. The apartment is a duplex, and her room is on the top floor. We were waiting for her little brother, 14, to come home from school at about 6.15. At the time, it was 6 p.m., so there was no way in hell he would get out at 6 p.m. and get home not a minute later. Yet we heard him get to the lower apartment, open the door, and start singing, which was a totally normal thing for him to do. Called his name so many times and he kept singing, but he didn't answer. We were pissed at him because we wanted him to run to the store by the house to grab us all some food. So we just laughed it out and sat a bit, finishing what we were doing before going down and teasing him about ignoring us. Little backstory. The lower apartment is composed of a kitchen, a bathroom, two living rooms, one small and one big, and the parents' bedroom and a little, you know, brother's bedroom. I just hated the side of the kitchen and the big living room and I never felt comfortable there. It always looked dark no matter how many windows are open and how many people are there. I hated and almost never go there. Even praying there didn't feel right. Back to the story. A couple of minutes before going down to the intercom, it started ringing. We called the still singing dude to pick up, but he didn't, so I went down. But nobody was there. No one. Her little brother who was singing was the one ringing. We opened the door for him and he got up and asked him if he got in. Said he left his keys in. He had just gotten out of school. It was 6.12 p.m., which is logical walking and talking to his friends on the way and all. I checked the keys. They were inside the house. My friend refused to talk any more about it because she lived there and didn't think more, just like any other experience that she had. But this one, we couldn't brush it off. We eventually talked about it because it was shared. We can't hallucinate the same thing for like 10 straight minutes but we can't explain it either. Real supernatural incident that I experienced when I was 10 years old. I'm from Asia. I have a deep fascination for the supernatural. I've been reading ghost stories posted in this community for quite some time now and have enjoyed a lot of them. However, today I would like to share an incident that happened with me when I was 10 years old. English isn't my first language, so I apologize for any grammatical error in advance. So here's what happened. This incident took place when I was 10. The year was 2001. I was living with my maternal uncle and his wife as my school at the time was about five minutes away from their home. My uncle's wife had given birth to their second child, and another one of my aunts had decided to stay with us to help my uncle and his aunt manage things. We used to sleep in the same room as there were three beds in the room arranged in a U-shape. My aunt and her newborn child used to sleep in one bed, my other aunt and the first child used to sleep on the second bed, and I and my uncle used to sleep on the third one. One night my uncle woke me up and he looked pretty excited. I was still half asleep and didn't understand what was happening. He said I need to get up quickly as somebody was here to meet me. Thought it was already morning and my parents had come to see me and I got excited and sat up pretty quickly. And what I saw completely puzzled me. Both my aunts were sitting together on the bed opposite to mine. My uncle also went there and sat beside my aunts as soon as I got up. There was a girl standing in front of them. She looked like she was 16 or 17 years old and she was smiling at me. She started walking towards me. This scared me and I jumped and stood over my bed. She tried to climb over the bed but I pushed her and she fell down. 
She got up, looked at me, and started trying to get on the bed. Again, I pushed her back again. This happened a third time, too, and I got really scared. The fact that my uncle and aunts were all watching all this quietly freaked me out. When she got up the fourth time, I closed my eyes, joined my hands in prayer, and started praying out loudly. After a few moments of praying, I felt someone's hand on my shoulder, and for a moment I thought that girl caught me. But when I opened my eyes, it was my uncle. He asked me why I was standing on my bed and praying out loudly in the middle of the night. They assumed that I was sleep-talking, but I explained them that I wasn't, told them about the whole incident, comforted me and tried to make me go back to sleep, but the fear of what has just happened prevented me to go to sleep again that night. At that time, they convinced me that it was just a bad dream, but when we talked about the incident now, they admit that they all believe in the supernatural and what I saw that night could be 100% real. I know there's a little scientific proof that spirits exist, but I truly believe that I was not dreaming that day, and whatever I saw was real. Remembering the ghost my roommates and I lived with years ago. After my freshman year of college, my randomly assigned roommate turned best friend and another girl on our floor, who we became very close with in the dorms, all decided to rent a house together the following year. The other girl, her stepdad, flipped houses and had recently renovated this place that was two blocks from campus. A three bed that cost us three to four hundred a month each, really affordable for a bunch of nineteen year olds. The house itself was gorgeous, with a sunroom, a basement with a washer and a dryer, two beds on the main floor with a bathroom, and basically an upstairs suite with a huge master and walk-in closet and private bath. The other girl took that whole floor to herself since it was her dad's place. Didn't pay rent because her family thought she was too busy with cheerleading in her sorority. That's a whole separate conversation leading up to why my best friend and I moved out. The important thing is, my friend and I had the two main levels of the floor, excuse me, the two main level rooms, just off the living room with the bathroom between us. Don't even remember when the paranormal experiences started. I remember by October and we moved in August. It was enough that her dumbasses did a seance and had already named our ghost Claire. With all the windows closed, we asked her a bunch of questions, and she moved the candle different directions for yes and no. Things were really bad for my friend, and mildly annoying for me. This all happened on the main level and the third girl never experienced anything. My friend would experience sleep paralysis frequently, wake up to a woman sitting on top of her, or see her standing in the corner near her closet. The sink in the bathroom between our rooms would turn on and off all night. For me, she would open my door and get into bed with me. Funny thing is, at first I didn't even realize it was the ghost doing that. The third roommate had a cat, and I assumed the cat was in bed pretty often. After a while, when I would feel the weight pushing down on the bed, I would keep turning around, and nothing and no one was there. I'd turn my back, and a second later the weight would get closer to me. I'd turn around, and nothing. I worked 12-hour shifts on Saturdays, and I would be so exhausted I just started to let it happen. So frequent but it wouldn't even be worth the fight to get up and close my door or roll over to check the bed. I only saw her once. I was home alone and deep cleaning my room. The light was on in the living room and my room created a sort of triangle of darkness in that short hallway. I was pulling the vacuum out of my room when out of the corner of my eye a woman with dark hair was standing behind me. She was so real. Both my roommates had dark hair. I jumped and said, oh my god, you scared me. As I was turning around and when I finished turning, no one was there. That was the first time Claire actually spooked me. My friend and I moved out a few months later due to a lot of issues with the third roommate. In the years following whenever the experience gets brought up with my friend, they're near tears talking about the terror that Claire put her through at night, whereas I often joke about how I had a ghost girlfriend cuddling with me at night. 
I don't know why she was nice to me. In some ways, I feel bad that she revealed herself to me, and I was scared of her. She seemed harmless, just kind of active. Then again, she was so awful to my friend, and that's also unexplainable. I think the funniest part of this story, though, is when constantly living with an, act, you know, an active entity. You do eventually get used to whatever they're doing. Between nursing school for my friend and classes plus 30 hours a week of work at a standing job, at some point I need sleep no matter who's in bed. Any advice? Since I would say middle school any time I've lived with her, or even not lived with her. Hmm? I'm 23, living on my own, and she still experiences strange things. There have been strange occurrences. Here's some examples. I've always woken up randomly in the middle of the night for as long as I can remember. So when I was about 11, the condo we were living in was just me and my mom. We had a Jack and Jill style bedrooms with the bathroom connecting us. And I would randomly in the middle of the night hear my mom's flat iron cord hitting against the bathroom cabinets. And I knew that sound because I was very used to hearing it in the mornings. When she got ready, she would kind of also hear scratching on the walls in her bedroom. I moved in with my dad at 12 till I was 17. Never experiencing really anything out of the ordinary. And I'm unsure if my mom did living by herself. When I moved back in with her at 17, we lived in a condo. Me and my mom and her husband at the time who worked third shift. Here I experienced an old VCR player in my room randomly turn itself on and start rewinding itself even though it was unplugged. I was almost asleep one night and felt the palm of a hand slightly slap me on the cheek twice. I had a small dog at the time who'd randomly growl and follow something that wasn't there. When I wasn't home, my mom and stepdad would say they could hear talking in my room. They would be in the living room. My mom also on two separate occasions heard a man say hello to her at night while in bed and felt as if something sat on the bed and caused it to dip down while she was home alone. Also felt as if something lifted up at the end of her bed and shook it. At 19, me and my boyfriend, now husband, moved into our own place. Never experienced any sense of it, but my mom lives in a different place with her current boyfriend, and while her boyfriend was mopping home alone, when he turned around, he saw two footprints in a wet mopped floor behind him. They were bare footprints. He always wears shoes in the house, too. My little sister, who was three, started randomly pointing and laughing at something over my mom's shoulder while she was dressing her. My mom's boyfriend woke up in the middle of the night to the feeling of getting scratched on his back. And my mother was facing the opposite way asleep. And there were red scratch marks on him the next morning. There's several other things that have happened, but those are the biggest things I can think of at the moment. I've often heard, the more you talk about it, the worse it gets. But with everything that's happened and the fact that it's always where she lives, it leads me to believe something is attached to her. What that is... I have no clue, but how does one even go about fixing this? And how does one end this story, other than saying, see ya? <laughs>